receiver they've seen. Marcus Dupree was rated the number one high school prospect in the nation, and he has disappointed no one. Dupree last week went 80 yards for a touchdown, his fourth run of 60 yards or more. The six foot three, 225 pounder is considered to be the best young back in the country. Oklahoma versus Missouri, Big A football on CBS. second consecutive time as a sellout at Owen Field on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. The 15th ranked Sooners playing host to the Missouri Tigers. And with two games to go, it's a two-team race for the conference title. If Nebraska and Oklahoma can win today, that moves them to the showdown. November 26th in Lincoln for the conference title. And here come the Oklahoma Sooners. Gary Bender along with Steve Davis. And Steve, Oklahoma coach Barry Switzer has called Missouri a mystery team. I think that Warren Powers had every reason to be optimistic about the football team early in the year. They had seven of the 11 offensive starters from last year. They had some exceptional players on defense that were coming back. But I think the, the problem has been a couple of things. One, an extraordinary number of injuries to key positions running back and the skilled position players. And the other point is, is they've had problems in the kicking game. They've used three different kickers. And then finally, the quarterback mystery of who is going to the surface in the 10th game of being the number one quarterback. Well, the two quarterbacks are Brad Perry and Marlon Adler. Perry will start today, and we asked Coach Warren Powers why he made that decision. I'm starting Perry because Perry has a little more experience. He has played against Oklahoma, and uh, we'll do a better job, I think, to start the game. Marlon Adler will come off the bench. He's a good option quarterback. He's a good sprint out quarterback, and we'll give a little different dimension to our offense. Steve, when you quarterbacked Oklahoma to the national championships in 74 and 75, you're a wishbone team, but there's a new look here at Oklahoma, the I formation. There is a new look. 1970, Oklahoma was struggling a little bit, and a young offensive coordinator by the name of Barry Switzer made the decision to go from the beer to the wishbone. The same thing happened this year. They got shut down offensively, and what they've done, they've gone to a formation that really highlights their best players. They've taken the pressure off the quarterback and given it to these two young men right here. Marcus Dupree at 158 yards last week. Week. Wilson 144. What a one-two punch they are from the I formation. We will see the wishbone though as this game wears on. Last year, Missouri defeated Oklahoma 19 to 14, the first time they'd won in 11 years over the Sooners. We'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. As you can see, it is brisk today. It's cold, 35 degrees at kickoff time. The wind at 14 miles per hour is expected to warm up before the day is over. But this is the coldest day these two clubs have had to play in in this 1982 season. Brad Burden will be kicking off for the Missouri Tigers. We have quite a kicking story as far as Oklahoma is concerned. Their kicker, Michael Keeling, hurt his ankle walking from one class to the other this week. And we'll have to wait and see who they're going to go with before the afternoon is over. Marcus Dupree and Fred Sims go back for the Oklahoma Sooners, who have won six in a row after losing one of those games early against West Virginia, then winning one and then dropping a 12 to nothing shutout at the hands of USC. And as Steve Davis mentioned, they went to the I formation and their success has been outstanding since that time. John McClintock is the referee, the Big 8 officials in charge of this game. And what a rivalry this has been through the years. 
Barry Switzer says Missouri always plays as tough. And they come in here after winning last week. An impressive win over Colorado. Burdett, and this game is underway. It's going to be Fred Sims, and Sims having trouble with the ball, and that will bring it out to the 20-yard line. This Oklahoma team is very young up front offensively. Their best player in the offensive line is Paul Parker, a junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, who they think will be an all-Big 8 performer. He's number 62. Kelly Phelps will be the quarterback. He was really suspended for the start of last week's game, a disciplinary action, came back to play well. There's Dupree and Wilson, Clues and Sewell. This team has not thrown a touchdown pass all year. There is Parker up front, the man we talked about. Watch him, number 62. From the 20-yard line, Wilson and Dupree in the backfield. That is Sewell in motion. Dupree, and Dupree will go for a couple of yards to the 22-yard line. Dupree out of Philadelphia, Mississippi. And now defensively for the Missouri Tigers. They've always been a tough defensive team through the years. Randy Joseph out of Omaha, Nebraska. Big, strong defensive tackle. Lockett is having some toe trouble. We'll watch to see how well he can play. Wilson is the leading tackler. And back deep, Demetrius Johnson is playing with a bad ankle. And Matichek is going to start for him. He's in there now at the left corner spot the middle comes Wilson to the 25 yard line it's going to bring up third down and still five to go Gary one of the things that Missouri defensively wanted to do against Oklahoma is to confuse the offensive line try to give them a lot of different looks and movements in that front so that they can make decisions and make their calls Missouri does not respect Oklahoma's ability to audible or their ability to throw the football they must stop the fullback early in this football game third and four the reason they don't respect their passing ability they're only averaging 57 yards a game and as we mentioned, haven't thrown a touchdown pass. A mix-up on a third and four. The right side of the Oklahoma line and left prematurely, it looked like. The illegal procedure against the Sooners. Oklahoma, through the years, has been a high-risk offense. They've had a lot of turnovers, but surprisingly, Missouri's had more this year. 34. Start on the offense, and it's still third down. Third down now, virtually nine yards to go. Kelly Phelps, out of Oklahoma City. He's wearing a beard. He says his mother-in-law doesn't like it, but he's wearing it anyway. Sewell in motion, Dupree. And Dupree's still going to be six yards short of the first down, and Oklahoma will have to kick. And we'll wait to see if Keeling can, in fact, kick. He has been the kicker four years for Oklahoma out of Dallas, Texas, and he's going to try it. What a strange injury to this guy. What really happened is that he was running from tree to tree during a rainstorm from the library and slipped on his ankle. <laughs> a non-football injury. I don't imagine the Switzer's too happy about that. Ricky Doby is back deep for the Missouri Tigers. Keeling this year, averaging 43.3. That is second best in the Big 8. A line drive kick. It's not a good kick at all, and it's going to go out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Only 26 yards in distance. So Missouri will have excellent field position. They have the football for the first time. We're just underway at the 12.58 mark. Missouri with the football from the 50-yard line. It's kind of football Missouri likes to play. Field position and ball control. Now Byrne and Barbosa are the two running backs, a freshman and a sophomore behind quarterback Brad Perry. From the 50-yard line, the Tigers. Perry straight ahead to Barbosa. He's a freshman out of Maryland. He's run a 9-600 in high school. He advances the ball into the Oklahoma, into the field, to the 48-yard line. Let's look offensively now at the Tigers. Warren Powers at quarterback has Perry. He started last year when they beat Oklahoma. Barbosa, Malvern. We talked about Caber and White is a fine receiver at the other side. He has 11 catches. Gibbler is the all-time leading receiver in Missouri. 99 catches. Second down now. Eight yards to go. Perry on a little reverse spin. Racket goes to Barbosa, and Barbosa advances to the 41-yard line of Oklahoma. Thomas Benson, the linebacker out of Ardmore, Oklahoma, making the tackle. It's going to come now to a, about a yard to go. Defensively, watch Rick Bryan. He had 19 tackles last week. He's a strong All-Big A candidate, an honor he won a year ago. 
Slater's vastly underrated. Schiff, the leading tackler on this team. He and Benson are a real fine one-two punch. And back deep, Stanberry last week was the Big 8 Defensive Player of the Week. Third down, a yard, and Perry to sneak it. And it appears as though he has the first down and does. The Tigers now, with the initial first down of this game, advancing to the 39-yard line. Jerry, one of the things the Missouri coaches quite candidly told me that we've got to get confidence early in the football game. Now remember, Brad Perry is not the running quarterback. He came out on the third down play and ran the option play, which is certainly not what Oklahoma is anticipating. Perry last week got him off to a good footing. Getting ahead of Colorado 17 to nothing, they brought Adler in. Tracy Mack, the sophomore from St. Louis, now in at the fullback spot. He's had shoulder problems, missing the last two weeks. Second man is Barbosa, and Barbosa on a first down, moving to the 36-yard line, picking up maybe four yards on the play. Missouri is the leading passing team in the Big 8, averaging 206 yards a game. But their rushing statistics pale. But, Steve, when you look at Nebraska and Oklahoma's rushing stats, they do pale. That's right. Oklahoma and Nebraska, of course, they have really tried to live by the run. Missouri, because of the injuries to the running back position, have had to probably make the transition more to the pass when they'd like to consider themselves totally balanced. Second down, six. Mack, Barbosa in the backfield. White is split to the bottom of the screen. Brad Perry from the 36-yard line gives to Barbosa nothing this time. The big red line reacting well. That was Rick Bryan, the man we mentioned from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 6'4", 260. He is, according to the coaching staff, an overachiever. He just plays at 100% all the time. He really is. He's one of the exceptional players on the Oklahoma team. One of the things Missouri is doing that is really fascinating to me right now is they are giving Oklahoma so many different formations. They have not come out in the same formation yet. And you expect to see a lot of that defensively also. Third down now, still almost six yards to go. Mack Barbosa in the backfield. Perry back to throw. Almost picks off. The man who almost got it was Stanberry, who had the interception for a 41-yard touchdown return last week. Stanberry out of Mount Pleasant, Texas. Stanberry is a strong safety, number 19, watching Brad Perry on the row left, trying to get a little flow out of the secondary. Secondary, Really, a poorly thrown ball. He was trying to go to Caver, number 82. Almost a big play, Oklahoma. Caver coming in with 32 grabs. We're going to have a 52-yard field goal attempt now by Brad Burdett. He's hit five of six. His longest is 51, so this would be the longest of the year if he's able to do it. Burdett out of Monroe City, Missouri. It's going to be way short. So Oklahoma holds. Missouri, after picking up the initial first down, their drive stalled. And the Sooners now will have good field position at the 35-yard line. Now, anytime that you're kicking a field goal, what you're giving up, they have given Oklahoma 15 additional yards of uh, field position. It's nothing, nothing. We're in the first quarter. Oklahoma, Missouri. We'll be back. Barry Switzer is 8-1 against Missouri. He has 97 wins. If he wins this one and Nebraska in a bowl game, he'd have 100 wins before this year is over. Wilson and Dupree in the backfield behind Phelps. Give to Wilson the fullback across the 40. He's out to the 43-yard line. Stanley Wilson had a very eventful Saturday a week ago. His wife gave birth to a baby boy, and he gained 144 yards. The fullback play, just as it is in the wishbone, is the essential play to this offense. Oklahoma's alignment has changed. In football, anybody that knows anything about it, it's not the formations. It's the personnel in the right formation that makes the difference in good football. Second down, two, a gain of eight by Wilson. Winners in motion. Dupree with the football, and look at this. 45, 50, and there is the ad-lib ability, the athletic ability of Dupree, a 10-yard run on a game that shouldn't have gone anywhere. Jeff Smith eventually made the stop. We have a man shaken up on the play. Here is where Marcus Dupree really is emerging to be a great back because he gets kind of shoved, shoved inside and then is forced outside. Missouri had him defense but then all of a sudden he breaks to the outside and uses his very deceiving 4-5 speed. Missouri player shaken up is Rod Skillman, senior out of Dalton, Missouri. Look at these statistics, Steve Davis. Prior to the I formation, and since that time, 7.8 yard average per carry. I think what Oklahoma, why they went to the I formation is because it, 
they were getting their best backs not they were not having the opportunity to run with the football they were having to run east and west or parallel to the line of scrimmage and a marcus dupree or a stanley wilson really could not go north and south of football and so that's the reason they went to it and marcus dupree is one of the benefactors of it dupree when he was in the ninth grade believe it or not ran a nine five one hundred and Barry Switzer told us he didn't think he was that fast. He came here and he said he looked like he was gliding. He went out and he asked the kid, he said, can you run that? As Gilman's coming off, can you run that fast? So they got him out here and timed him, and he ran a lot of 4.51. He just doesn't look that fast. He's so big, so strong, that he gets the distance covered. What happened, remember that day, the first time he ran, he ran a 4.53, and Switzer didn't believe him, made him run with James Lee. And he won it. <laughs> On the first down, carry comes Wilson. Wilson still fighting for yardage inside the 45. Taft Sales, who started the year as a linebacker, junior out of Rockhurst High School in Kansas City, Missouri. Their second leading tackler made the stop on Wilson. I started to say Wilson had the baby boy. They named it Stanley Wilson Jr. And Wilson gave his newborn son the game ball. Well, quite an event for Stanley Wilson family. And so now on a second down and seventh from the 42. Curry has replaced Skillman. Curry, a junior out of Arlington, Texas, replacing the injured Skillman. Here is Dupree. Dupree with the quickness inside the 35 to the 34. Sales and Raymond Hairston made the stop. And you saw the acceleration by number 22. Dupree from Philadelphia, Mississippi, just north of Meridian. What really got him to come to Oklahoma was a Barry Switzer unannounced loaded up Billy Sims on a plane. They flew down there. Sims got off the plane, and Dupree was awestruck. And you know what happened since then. He's here now playing for Oklahoma. First down, Dupree trying to go wide. Look at the strength he has. He stiff on to the 30-yard line. Marcus Dupree picking up four. Jeff Smith again. Out of Kansas City, Kansas, making the stop. And Oklahoma on the move. The Sooners coming in here, averaging 328.6 yards per game. They're high this year. They had 556 yards on the ground against Kansas. Wilson to Dupree in the backfield on a second down, five. Wilson has a first down inside the 20 to the 19. Straight ahead football, power football that time. Harrison and Smith again on the stop, and another Missouri man getting up very slowly. That is Taft Sales. Missouri's trying to get set in their defensive line. They're giving Oklahoma different looks and watching break outside. And really, the pressure of that fullback, what he does as the end man on the line of scrimmage of the defense is really what has made the key for the play because Stanley Wilson is a tremendous explosive runner. Wilson at six. 202 pounds. This is the seventh play of this drive, starting from the 35-yard line to three, inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Well, a lot of people, maybe back in the East watching this game, would expect to see Oklahoma out of the wishbone. This is the new look. Power football now, the I formation. That carry by Dupree gives him 36 yards on six carries, averaging six yards per carry. Second down, coming up, four yards to go. Very impressive drive by Oklahoma. Carter's foot to the bottom. Belt gives off to Wilson. Wilson to the 10. It's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Barry Switzer upset at something. Switzer, <laughs> last year, not able to capture the Big A Conference title, the only time since he's been here. They finished 7-4-1, and one, eventually beating Houston in the Sun Bowl. But they'd like to go to the Orange Bowl this year. They need to win today. And if Nebraska defeats Iowa State, we'll have that showdown November 26th on CBS. Third down a yard. Up the middle. Wilson. Touchdown. Straight wishbone. Two tight ends set. Look at the offensive line. The three inside people. They wall them off and give Stanley Wilson an opportunity. Oklahoma, a lot of times, will go into a short yardage situation and go into the wishbone. They have more strength 
more balance, puts more pressure on the defense. Stanley Wilson, that's his fourth touchdown rushing of the year. The point after attempt, David Culver kicking a place of the injured Keeling out of Delacqua, Oklahoma, makes it 7-0. And so Oklahoma, with a 65-yard drive in nine plays, now lead it 7-0. Oklahoma with a seven to nothing lead. You know, Dupree in the last five games has scored the first touchdown, so they've changed their script. We we'll finally have Wilson here scoring first for Oklahoma. And the Sooners, that entire drive staying on the ground. Culver kicking it very high and very short. And the fair catch called for at the 21 yard line. That's an unusual play. That was Eric Drain. One of those kind of kicks you don't know what to do with. And so from the 22 is actually where they'll mark it. And Missouri, who had one first down when they had the football at the 50-yard line, then missing the 52-yard field goal, then not able to stop that surge of Oklahoma. Malvern and Barbosa will be the running backs. Caber, White, split out. Brad Perry from the 22 for the Tigers. Barbosa. Barbosa will get two, maybe three yards to the 24-yard line. And now for an update from the NCAA Today crew, here's Brent Musburger. Gary Michigan strikes first against Purdue. Watch Steve Smith. Beautiful catch here by Anthony Carter. Well-thrown ball. 48 yards for the Wolverine touchdown. They are a step closer now to Pasadena and the Rose Bowl. Back to Gary Bender. That's right, Brent. If they win that one, they're on their way to Pasadena. They wouldn't have to win that game next week against Ohio State. Second down, seven. Brad Perry back in trouble, and he's going to get back just about to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Rick Bryan was the man, number 80, who got through and eventually dropped him, and it's going to bring up still a good eight yards to go on third down. Perry does not have the mobility that Adler does, and in that instance, he could have used some mobility as the loss now. Axe is going to bring up third down and nine to go. They lost one yard on the play. Perry out of Trenton, Missouri. He started the final four games last year for the Tigers. Early in the year, it was Adler that started, but this guy took over in the sixth game. It's Malvern incomplete. Glenn Malvern who scored two touchdowns last week against Colorado. And so it's fourth down now for Missouri. Ryan and Goodlow over there reacting very well. And this Oklahoma team getting off very fast footing. John McClintock and the Big A crew in charge of this game. It's a cold day, you gotta keep moving around there. 35 degrees at kickoff time of the win. Blowing from left to right. Adler will kick. Kicking away from Case, and it's going to go out of bounds at the Oklahoma 33-yard line. Oklahoma, after that 44-yard kick, with a 7 0 lead, 4 minutes, 35 seconds in the first quarter. Let's go, Let's go. Immediately after this game, Brennan Air will have scores and highlights, and then we're going to take your ringside. Ray Boom Boom Mancini defends his WBA lightweight crown against Oriental Pacific champ Dooku Kim, the WBA's number one right challenger. Boom Boom, by the way, you know, the only loss he's had against Alexis Arguello, who lost last night an outstanding fight to Aaron Pryor. First down now for the 33 for Oklahoma. We have some new running backs. This is Sims. Sims along with Weldon Ledbetter in the backfield for Oklahoma. Sims advances it out to the 36-yard line. Randy Joseph making the tackle. This man is quite a football player in his own right. Just a sophomore out of Tucson, Arizona. He had 181 yards in that Sun Bowl victory against Houston. They have a freshman that they've redshirted here, Steve. It's an outstanding prospect. Wayman out Tulsa. Houston. Yep, Wayman. And so second down. Up the middle, Sims. Sims has the first down across the 50. He's to the Missouri 48-yard line. Raymond Harrison out of Springfield, Missouri, makes the tackle after Sims picked up 17 yards on the play. 
much against Freddie Sims. Coach Switzer says he looks cute in a football uniform. He really uses speed. Tremendously gifted athlete. Bench press is about 375 pounds. By the way, Rod Skillman, who was shaken up earlier, is back in now at defensive tackle for Missouri. Ledbetter, Sims still in the backfield. Sewell also back there. A gift to Ledbetter. Ledbetter, of course, from the St. Louis area. He played at Christian Brothers High School. He was the athlete of the year in the St. Louis area. Since coming here, he's had some success. His best game, 144 yards against Texas. Now, this is a big game in the ACC. They can clinch at least a tie, whoever wins this game today. Clemson leading Maryland. Maryland has won seven games in a row. Second down, seven yards to go. Sims led better again in the backfield. Phelps gives to Sims. Sims inside the 40, very close to the first down. Jay Wilson out of Decatur, Illinois, who has tied the Missouri season mark for tackles with 113, just added another to the total. They're going to have to measure to see if he got the first down. Steve, it's amazing to me, and you mentioned this at the top of the show, that you can change an offense after the season's underway. Well, when they did it back in 1970, it was more of a drastic decision. We see very short to get to first and 10. But it was a drastic decision then because they were in the Veer offense and they went to a totally different concept in the wishbone. This is very similar to the wishbone, what they're doing. The alignment is much different, but the basic plays and design is the same. They're just getting the ball to the two best backs and taking the pressure off the quarterback and not having to run the option play so much. The boy able to do that is just remarkable. They did it, beat Iowa State. They went down to the Cotton bowl beat texas and they've been on their way that was short of the first down but now they've got it phelps phelps is going to take it to the five touchdown Probably the most surprised person in the stadium is Kelly Phelps. He just bounced off the tackle. He's trying to get the first and ten, and all of a sudden, surprise, all the defensive players had bounced by him, and he finds himself in the end zone. Oklahoma with a 13 to nothing lead. A Culver point after Phelps holds. He hits it right down the middle. And the Sooners, the last two times they've had the football, have marched paint on the ground all the way. Again, look at the blocks on the right side of the Oklahoma offense. That's Williams and Burks that made the blocks. And then Kelly Phelps able to bounce off of a tackle that was kind of crowded up in there and didn't realize that Kelly had the ball and he uses his 4-5 speed and gets in the end zone. Phelps isn't that big. He weighs 185, but he really pounded Harrison into the ground and took it in. And now for an NCAA Today update, let's go back to New York and here is Brent Musburger. <laughs> Gary Clemson strikes first against Maryland in that battle for the ACC. Watch the pitch quickly to Austin, and he gets in, and it is 7-0, Clemson over Maryland. Let's go back now to Missouri, Oklahoma. Brent, that's a good look at Austin, who's really come on after a slow start. The Clemson Tigers losing early to Georgia, tying Boston College, and have gone unbeaten since that time. 2.48 left in this first quarter, and Oklahoma is moving. They are impressive. As you look now at Caver, number 82, Missouri, you have the feeling, needs a big play. They need to get something rolling. Thus far in the game, Oklahoma has 141 yards in total offense. Of course, all that on the ground. Missouri was 16 yards. Culver will kick off. Now, as you look at the last drive, the distance, 67 yards. The other drive was 65. Culver will not kick deep. They're just going to try to get it high, and here they go again. This will be Eric Drain, and Drain will bring it out across the 30, and Missouri will have good field position. That will move it out to the 36-yard line. At halftime, we'll have Brad and Era updating some of what you've already seen, that Clemson and game against Maryland, but also at halftime, a man who I've had the pleasure of knowing for a long time, the Deaner, Dean Naismith, the head trainer at the University of Kansas, He's been there 50 years, head trainer since 1938, and what a what a wonderful man he is. And in their own words, that'll be part of our halftime show. Adler is now in at quarterback for Missouri. And he comes out throwing, hits Caver. Caver has a first down catch at the 46, and that might be what the Tigers need. Adler, a 17-yard completion. 
Jerry Sanders making the tackle for Oklahoma. Well, one of the things Oklahoma felt like that if they had Perry in the football game, who is more a straight drop back, then Oklahoma can tee off and go after him. With an Adler, he's able to get outside more, put more pressure on the defense, and make it more difficult for Oklahoma to play football, and he's best coming off the bench anyway. And so the sophomore from Winfield, Kansas, is in. He pitches off, and this is Barbosa, and Barbosa inside the Oklahoma 40 to the 39. Now, there's some of that mobility we're talking about. Good job that time by Adler on the option. An eight-yard pickup on the play at second down two. Adler was an all-state performer in Winfield, but he was a walk-on at Missouri. He started out as the number one quarterback in four of the first five games. Then he was having some problems making some bad reads, making some bad decisions. But he's back in there now, and they need some offense from him. He's going to try to go for it on a first down, and he has it. Showing good poise that time. Steve, you can certainly realize what he's going through. You've run those options many times. The players that have always, or the quarterback types that have given Oklahoma the most difficulty over the years has always been the more mobile player that can throw the football. John Elway riddled Oklahoma here in this stadium. Marlon Adler represents the same type of skill, not quite as perfected as John Elway's, but he can do it and put the pressure on the defense. NCAA football on CBS. The last time these two clubs were on CBS on television was 1963. We're just glad to be here. Adler on first down. Time to throw. Now in trouble. And he fights his way to the 40-yard line. He would not go down easily, however. Weddington eventually drops him for a 7-yard loss. Back outside the 40-yard line. He had initial time to throw, but nobody was open. Danny Wilson also putting on good pressure. A junior out of Sherman, Texas. This Oklahoma defensive team is going to be tough another year. That entire forward wall is back. Also, there are two linebackers. Second down, 17 yards to go. Adler on a quarterback draw. 35, Adler to the 30-yard line. That will be some six yards short of the first down. Bryan again on the stop. Last week, 19 tackles against Kansas State, the most for an Oklahoma player since 63. Here's good situation football. Oklahoma realizes they're going to have to throw the ball. Missouri counters with that, running the quarterback option. They're expecting the pass. He jumps right upfield, uses his running ability. Gives them a chance. That's exactly what they have, a chance now on third down and seven. Trailing 14 to nothing. And there was time to throw. Cable that may be it is. Pass interference. Scott Case, a junior from Edmond, Oklahoma, who played at Northeast Oklahoma A&M Junior College last year. A little premature, and Caver, who has a lot of respect, will have the pass interference call, and Missouri will have a first down. Oklahoma plays what they, Gary Gibbs, the defensive coordinator, calls the read and attack defense. Watch it kind of be overbearing here in the secondary. Scott Case on Caver. you got to let him catch the ball or at least make an opportunity at it, Scott. <laughs> Scott Case may be playing as well as anybody in that secondary. Coming from the junior college ranks, he was not recruited out of high school. He only weighed about 165 pounds. Barbosa, back in the backfield. First down, Missouri. Adler, off to Barbosa. 20, 15, he's to the 10. And he has another Missouri first down. Ryan over to make the stop. And Adler, since coming in, has this football team moving. Shake it up as Barbosa after a 14-yard completion. This is just like a running play for Missouri because it's a short pass, and it gives them a little bit added dimension. Just right over to the left, he's going to hit Barbosa. And Barbosa has tremendous speed, good speed. Watch him. He gets a good block on the outside. Gives him another big play. What a difference in this Missouri team. They're on the move. First and goal at the eight. Barbosa out of Fort Washington, Maryland. Eric Troy now comes in at one of the running back spots. And they're on the option. And he'll make it to the five. Weddington, who's in there now. We understand Kevin Murphy is out. He has some problems with his neck. He has a pinched nerve in his neck. And so Weddington out of Temple, Texas, now playing in his spot. Gary, we were talking about the young freshman that Oklahoma was high on. I said it was Wayman Tisdale. We were talking about basketball before. And he's a great freshman basketball player, also from Tulsa. But Spencer Tillman is the young football player here at Oklahoma that uh, Barry Switch is extremely high on. Mrs. Tillman, the family may be a little upset about. Tillman and Tisdale, that's close. <laughs> 
second and goal now, just short of the five. Gittler and Davis in, a pair of tight ends have come in now for the Missouri Tigers, and right now we have the end of this first quarter of play, and so they'll go to the other end of the field. Missouri trailing 14 to nothing, but they now have it, second and goal just short of the five-yard line. They can climb right back into this football game. We start the second quarter play. The sellout crowd of 75,000 at Owen Field. Second and goal, just short of the five for Missouri. They trail 14 to nothing. Adler giving off straight ahead. Eric Troy takes it in. Touchdown. Troy, a freshman from Paris, Missouri. His first touchdown run of the year. And Missouri's right back in this football game. What's the power of Eric Troy, number 30? Really gets contact here right in the line of scrimmage, but watch him just go right on in for the touchdown. That was a pressure drive for Missouri. An outstanding test of their character. Boy, they have come right back with Adler directing that drive on his initial series of the game. Point after attempt, Todd Richmond, a freshman from Lake Forest, Illinois. He's got it. It's 14 to 7. So the Missouri Tigers moving the ball 64 yards in eight plays, now trail by seven. Warren Powers, fifth year the coach of Missouri, four straight years he's taken him to a bowl, and he has to be encouraged by that last drive. He brought Adler in, they moved at 64 yards, and Powers, who last year defeated Oklahoma the first time they had beaten Oklahoma in 11 years. There's the drive we were talking about, Troy, his first touchdown run as a collegiate player. And getting ready to kick off will be Burdett. Dupree and Sims back deep for Oklahoma. The crowd a little bit quieted now after that impressive drive by the Tigers. I think they're frozen. <laughs> Boy, did the weather change here? About 30 degrees difference in one day. This is Sims. Sims out to the 20. 25 to the 26-yard line. Oklahoma will have it the last two times they've had the ball. They've marched for touchdowns. Let's look at the stats down that first quarter. I think what is impressive, really, is the balance of Missouri. Even though they've not had a lot of total yardage in 67, Oklahoma, again, showing they're not going to throw the football, and it's been split as far as possession. But Missouri's got to be encouraged on that last drive of what they accomplished. Look at that zero. It keeps blinking. That's to remind Oklahoma that they just don't throw the ball well. Or often. <laughs> Number 26, up the middle, Stanley Wilson. Wilson advancing to the 28. Oklahoma has not thrown a touchdown pass this year. They're tied in. Johnny Fontenet hasn't caught a pass his entire career, which would be a first, a dubious first. Oklahoma's the only Division I school to not throw a touchdown pass this year. Look at this now. Clemson with a 14-point lead in Michigan. They're on their way to Pasadena. Wilson to Dupree in the backfield. Here's Marcus Dupree. Dupree on a second down and about seven. Advancing the ball to the 33. Skillman making the stop for the Missouri Tigers. Third down coming up. Third down. Three yards to go. Again, Gary, Missouri continues to move their defensive line around almost on every play to give the Oklahoma line something to look. They do not respect Oklahoma's ability to audible or the offensive line's intelligence to be able to make changes at the line of scrimmage. Talk about alternating the running backs. Dupree and Wilson both have 40 yards. They go to the wishbone on this play. And Phelps on the option. Phelps advances to the 50-yard line. So there's the wishbone. A little surprise. They expected to see it, but maybe not at that moment. An 18-yard run. A man has been shaken up for Oklahoma. Now, Missouri this year has not been giving up the big plays. But earlier, they gave up the 38-yard touchdown run by Phelps, and now this long run by Phelps. Here's Oklahoma back in the environment they're most comfortable with. They pull the guard. Paul Parker, 62. He makes a good block. Kelly breaks into the secondary. That's uh, Harrison, number six, that had him, let him get by. And then uh, Kelly breaks the in and makes a significant gain. What the pressure is when you prepare for Oklahoma now is that you still better be ready for the wishbone because if you're not prepared, they can make a lot of teams look pretty foolish. They really can, and as often as they run it, they can jump into it very comfortably. That was an 18-yard run. Phelps has 56 yards on two carries in this game. We have a timeout. The ball is the 50-yard line. Oklahoma has it first down. The 
player was Brent Burks. He's out of there now. He's been replaced by Sidney Dodd. Kent Winters on the carry. Winters, senior out of Jacksonville, Arkansas. And he's very close to the first down. Now for another NCAA Today update, here is Brent Musburger. Gary, the Clemson offensive line eating up Maryland. Wedge blocking right straight ahead for the power touchdown by McSwain. And now they go up by two touchdowns. Let's go back to Gary Benton. Hey, those Tigers are really rolling. Danny Ford, of course, they've had a lot of destructions. They have, I shouldn't say destructions, distractions this week. They were put on probation by the ACC, but they are rolling anyway. That last carry by Winters was the first down inside the 40-yard line. Wilson Dupree in the backfield. Wilson, there's a penalty flag. Half sales made the tackle for Missouri. And it's going to be holding against Oklahoma. First penalty of the game. Randy Justice, number 99, really an all-Big A performer. That's Steve Williams, 76. That time, they win the battle. Of course, he had a little bit of help out of Sidney Dodd, 65, on the double team. It's really tough to take on that double team play after play, especially when you're going against guys that weigh 280 and 265. You know, when you stop and think about it, that's one of the reasons they went to the eyes. That line, very inexperienced. With the eye formation, a back can read just a brush block. Get right. not yardage off of them. They got so frustrated. Let's listen to the call. Holding on the offense. It's still first down. Oklahoma got so frustrated running the wishbone and having to go parallel to the line of scrimmage that the linemen got frustrated. They were making pretty good blocks, but people just weren't making any yards. Now, even though it was a poor block, a great back can run by them and give them a little bit more uh, encouragement and yardage. Backs like Dupree and Wilson get a piece of them. That's all you need on a first and 20. Phelps in trouble. But this time, the option does not materialize. Bobby Bell, who may be the best athlete on this Missouri team, the brother, I should say, the son of Bobby Bell, the all-pro for the Kansas City Chiefs. Full house, wishbone backfield, counter option. Bobby Bell's got the quarterback. Kelly's looking down to try to get the pitch faster. He should have pitched off of Bobby Bell that time. Loss of four. Second down, 24. Wilson Dupree still in the backfield. 12.52 to go in this first half. Phelps sprinting out. He's going to throw the football. Clueless is down here. All Clueless, the sophomore from Oklahoma City. Jeff Smith defending on the play for Missouri. Clueless this year has eight catches. Of course, no touchdowns. At that time, just a little too long for him. Here, Oklahoma out of the I formation. They get motion to try to get the uh, secondary to set just a little bit. Kelly overthrows Clueless, number 82. Jeff Smith gives him plenty of cushion. If the ball's there, I think that's the problem that Oklahoma does not get respect from defensive secondaries because they've not completed the big home run ball very often this year. I think Jeff Smith was the most surprised guy in the ballpark. The quarterback getting back there. Third down now. 24 yards to go. Dupree. Dupree will get to the midfield side, and that's all for that holding penalty. Really stymies this Oklahoma drive. They're going to have to get rid of it. That was Potter and Judd over on the stop. Ken Judd, who had a brother, Jim, who played at Missouri, and Dupree, and the Oklahoma offense stalls. Well, the, the mistake on offense was one thing, but I think Missouri's got to be having more confidence right now to be able to get Marcus Dupree running east and west against parallel the line of scrimmage. It looks like the old wishbone days, and Missouri's got to be encouraged with those defensive play. Barry Switzer was concerned about this mystery team. What team would show up? The one that played Nebraska to the wire or the one that lost to Oklahoma State? Right now, they're playing like that team that played Nebraska very tough. Five hit by Keeling. It's trying to make it into the end zone, so Keeling, bad ankle at all. It's not his ankle on his kicking foot, but instead the one that he would use as a plant foot. But you can see, he is a little bit gimpy. At the 20, Missouri has it. They trail by 7, 11.53 left in the half. Landon Turner was a starter on Bobby Knight's national championship team two years ago until that tragic auto accident. What a story that is, a rare look. Bobby Knight, Landon Turner. From the 20-yard line, Missouri trailing by 7. Adler, the quarterback. Barbosa with a football. Marshman brings it out to the 24-yard line. Barbosa was a high school All-American. He gained over 1,600 yards and played only five games as a senior. 
I feel like he could be one of those franchise type runners. Adler surveys the situation. Adler has come in. He's had Missouri on the move. Eric Drain, another freshman, comes into the backfield for the Tigers. Receivers put to the bottom. That's White. Greg White. Second down from the 24-yard line. Eric Drain straight ahead. He's to the 29. It's going to be short of the first down. Tom Flemons, a sophomore from Altus, Oklahoma, now into the nose guard. Spot in place of John Blake made the stop. So it's a yard short. Third down now coming up. But you can see Missouri, after being shocked early in this game, 14 to nothing, getting some confidence back, starting to play their top game. This is what concerned Barry Switzer because they've always had trouble with the Tigers. Third in the yard. Adler to Barbosa, and he's going to get the first down. Thomas Benson made the stop for Oklahoma, so the Tigers will have new life. They have a new series going. Line of scrimmage will be marked at the 32-yard line. Missouri coming in here with a record of four, three, and two. They won three of their first four, then they tied the next two, lost two, and then won last week, which was their first conference win of the year. Oklahoma fans, they've seen their team win six in a row. Drain, Barbosa in the backfield. Barbosa number 22, Drain is 33. Adler on the option. There shows his ability to carry the ball. Across the 35 to the 37. Again, Benson made the stop. Ship and Benson. Sounds like a moving company. They, along with Sanders, are the three linebackers for Oklahoma. They consider all three of them the starters. They're all fine players for Oklahoma. One thing that I think is interesting here, Missouri is really doing what they exactly wanted to, establishing their running game, or at least giving some indication that they're in a running game so they can open up and throw the football. And they're keeping the ball away from Oklahoma, which is what Warren Powers wanted to do. There's an end around to Caver, and Caver is hit hard at the 39-yard line. Excellent reaction by Oklahoma. A Missouri man is shaken up on the sideline. Scott Case was the guy who came over from the cornerback spot to stop that play. There's Caver, 82 at kind of the wing back flanker position tight. It's an inside reverse play, trying to take advantage of an overly aggressive Oklahoma defense. They've got to get the ball to James Caver more. If you had that kind of talent, you've got to give him the ball more. And they, he's the number one receiver in the Big 8 Conference. And just give him the ball and give him more opportunities. There's the man we mentioned. It's Craig White, a junior from Lawrence. He actually played most of his high school career at Decatur, Illinois, his senior year at Lawrence, Kansas, shaken up on that play. Caver, an interesting story. He was a walk-on. He's from Waynesville, Missouri, around the Fort Leonard area. Led the team in receiving last year, second of the Big 8, and he leads the Big 8 this year. He had 33 catches coming in. The record for a season at Missouri is 45. So he has a chance of getting that before it's all over. So from the 40-yard line, third down, three, as soon as we resume play. Carpenter now has come into the ball game, replacing White. White walking very slowly, and now Purdue is on the scoreboard. That Michigan team, after losing to UCLA and Notre Dame early in the year, has really been rolling. Mo Schimbeckler has them on track. This is for 1982. And now let's look at what's happening thus far today. Oklahoma jumped on him in a hurry. They had about 141 yards in that first quarter. First couple of long drives that Oklahoma had and tried to dominate the first quarter, but Missouri is again coming back and trying to establish their game. Third and three for the Tigers. Caber in motion. Adler on the boot leg, and they didn't fall him. He stays on his feet, and he's not going to get the first down, but what a great effort. Adler averted a five to six yard loss. He's going to be just short of the first down. Jackie Ship eventually made the tackle. Watch this. This almost is a disastrous play. It's an inside bootleg. He really put the ball in the wrong hip. There's one player he gets away from. Scott Case misses the tackle. And really, Marlon Adler turns into a 
court possibly a poor foreplay at least and to give him a chance. Now he's got to punt the football. That's tough. You run the ball and have to turn right around and kick the football. Adler coming into this game averaging 41.7. Hits it very well. Dupree backing up at the five. He called a fair catch. And so it's going to be at the six is where they'll mark it. Adler, a very fine kick of 52 yards. He got it high. He used that wind to good advantage. And at the 8.23 mark, Oklahoma has the football leading by seven. Oh, Oklahoma leading this rivalry, but now in a little bit of trouble. Dupree should not have fielded that ball. He should have let it go in for the touchback. So they got to fight their way out. Ledbetter carrying the ball. Ledbetter and Sims in the backfield, and Ledbetter gets in some operating room. He's all the way out to the 15. Well, wait a minute. Let's see where they're going to mark it. Just short of the 15. It's going to bring up second down, still two yards to go. They have a lot of confidence in this second alternate group. Ledbetter and Sims from the six-yard line. They come in with a man, feel they can do just as well as Wilson and Dupree. Second and two. Sewell also in the backfield. Phelps. Giving to Sims. Sims, first down, out to the 24-yard line. Fred Sims has been a man that's been plagued by a lot of injuries. If he can stay healthy, boy, what a career he's going to have. Now for an NCAA report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Gary Maryland is back in it against Clemson. Their freshman fullback, Badenek, will spread the defense out wide to the right, and then he'll power on in for the touchdown. It is now 14-7 there. Purdue is coming back against Michigan, 17-7. Let's go back now to Gary. As we come back here on a first down run, Ledbetter breaking it up the middle. Ledbetter, first down across the 40. To the 43, Potter made the stop. 19-yard run by number 43. So he is... Treating some of these former St. Louisans the way they don't want to be treated. The wishbone, good offensive line play. They're getting the good assault on the Missouri defense. And Weldon Ledbetter, 43, breaks into the secondary. He is stronger than Stanley Wilson, a 400-plus bench pressure. Great straight-ahead runner. In the spring, he was the number one fullback. He lost that, though, when he went back to the eye. Here is Sims, and Oklahoma's on a roll again. Sims across the 50. Into the Missouri end of the field. Pick it up, big yardage on that play. Giving seven. Bring up second down, coming up. What a luxury Oklahoma has to be able to take a Dupree out and put Sims in. Yeah, a little nacho action here, trying to keep warm. <laughs> you hungry, Steve? Cold. Second down. Went better, and I don't know if he got the first down or not. Be close. Taft sales again making the stop for Missouri and the indication they're measuring to look and they got it. First down. You know, Gary, when you look at the rushing statistics in the Big Eight Conference, you look at the top four people, top three people, Ernest Anderson of Oklahoma State, Mike Rozier of Nebraska, then Tommy Davis of Iowa State. Then listen, it's Stanley Wilson, Oklahoma, Marcus Dupree. Well, then Ledbetter and Freddie Sims at the four, five, six positions. Seven and positions. four of those guys are over 500 yards for the year. Isn't that something? Here comes Sims. Sims is one of those, and he's adding to the total to the 32-yard line. Ken Judd made the stop for Missouri, a 16-yard run. Describing him, they say he's quick as a hiccup. I don't know what that means, but Freddie Sims really is real small, not real big, 5'10", 210. It just breaks into the uh, secondary. Tremendous explosive ability. Quick feet. Moves real well into the secondary. Hard to find when he wants to get in the secondary. He's been averaging five and a half yards to carry this season. Now at the 32-yard line. Oklahoma, first down. Curry has now come in defensively for Missouri. This is going to be Sewell. Touchdown. San Francisco, and he got there in a hurry, didn't he? He makes it 20 to 7. Some oranges coming on the field. Symbolic, they hope, of an eventual trip to the Orange Bowl for these Oklahoma Sooners. David Culver will come in to attempt the point after. And Culver has now made it 
21 to 7. Oklahoma an impressive drive. Going with their alternate backfield, eventually tapping that drive on this run. What happened, Missouri had an outside blitz. It was an inside play with Steve Sewell. They had rotated their secondary to the other side. It's man-on-man -man coverage. The outside, not a whole lot of run support. Steve Sewell uses his 4-5 speed, gets into the end zone. Remember that drive started 94 yards ago after that ill-advised fair catch by Dupree and Oklahoma just roared down the field in seven plays, taking 2.29 to do it. Culver will kick off once again. He had a brother, Ed, who was an offensive lineman at Oklahoma. Looking forward to some basketball. We've got some for you tomorrow. How about this? The USSR against Indiana. Bobby Knight. Interested to see what those Hoosiers will be like. And then NBA basketball. The Washington Bullets taking on Moses Malone and the Philadelphia 76ers. Do you miss doing the Russian basketball game? Uh, well, I tell you what. Those names <laughs> might take a little while to get them down phonetically, huh? <laughs> Oklahoma Towns will do the same thing to you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma Towns will do the same thing to you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> From the 40-yard line now, Culver will kick off as Caver and Doby will go back for the Missouri Tigers. So Oklahoma now with a 21 to 7 lead. They have 270 yards rushing. They're averaging nine yards a carry. Culver this time a little more distance on it. It's going to be Caver. Caver out to the 25-yard line and He'll make it out to the 26. So Missouri we was moving the football well, but all of a sudden, Oklahoma went the other way, the other direction. There's the drive of 94 yards. More big plays in this game than Missouri's used to giving up. What was it, only five plays over 30 yards? Four coming into the ball game, and then Oklahoma already has had two over 30. White is back into the game now. It's good to see that. He was shaken up earlier. It is a wide receiver spot from the 26. Adler, he's going to keep it. Pitch it. Dangerous pitch. Barbosa almost had that pitch intercepted by Brian Hall. He was there the moment the ball arrived there. A loss back to the 24-yard line. Hall out of Houston, Texas, a sophomore. Played very well. He doesn't have the great speed, but he's a very smart football player. This is where Marlon Adler's had his problems this year. It's an inside kind of reverse fake on the option. Right there, good low, forces the ball. Really, he should have gone to the turf. Don't try to force a pitch. Loss of two, second and 12. Adler back. Pressure on. He's going to run. He's got some room. 30. And he's going to be short of the first down as he's clotheslined at the 34 by Dwight Drain. Drain out of Miami, Florida. An academic all big eight pick a year ago. Drops him after a 10-yard pickup. So he's still going to be two yards short of the first down. But again, that's the mobility of Adler. And that's also the type of year he's had. And not to be critical of Marlon Adler, because he had that play before. Previous play was almost a dangerous play. And then all of a sudden, he comes right back and makes a great play. He didn't start him because Warren Powers feels he's too nervous. He hyperventilates before a game. So they started Perry. Adler's come in. He's done very well. Gibbler and Davis in. Two tight ends on a third and two. Adler to Barbosa. And Barbosa very close to the first down. Santio Barbosa. His father was an All-American quarterback. And college and played for the Baltimore Colts. What's the play? What's the good line blocking? Good execution. Goody, number 76, Laster, number 67, all wall off the Oklahoma defense inside to give Barbosa a chance for the first and 10. Barbosa's best game this year was 91 yards against East Carolina. First down, Missouri. The ball at the 36. Drain now comes into the backfield along with Barbosa. Missouri really feels like Barbosa's a super prospect. He has more finesse than uh, former great player at Missouri, James Wilder. That's been one of the problems. The injuries has really slowed down that running back department. Had to go to the young guys. Here is Caver. Caver. Very close to the first down, out across the 45. Ryan Hall made the stop. It'll be short of the first down by about a half yard. When you set up your running game and you're able to establish something, well, I love the way that Missouri starts. They look like a sprinter out of the blocks. Exactly. Short out route, five yards. Caver, real soft secondary by the corners. Good reception. 
One thing about this Caber, he can catch the ball, but they also feel he's one of the finest downfield blockers they've ever seen. Second down, less than a yard to go. Adler, Barbosa, and he has the first down for the Tigers. Just short of the 50. Brian making the stop for Oklahoma. So about the time you think that Oklahoma's going to get a lot of breathing room, a lot of operating room, this very determined Missouri team comes battling back, and now they're putting it together again. It'll be a first down at the Missouri 49-yard line. Up front, Greenfield, the center. Dempsey, Laster, the guard. Goody, Ecker, the two tackles. Drain, Barbosa in the backfield. Caber looked like he was going to go in motion. There he goes. Adler rolling his way. Throwing back to Caber. So Caber rolled all the way left on the motion, came back to the near side. They could not make connections. Jerry Sanders defending on the play. Adler now is 3 of 4 for 41 yards. They had what they wanted out of the secondary because as they were coming across the grain, Jerry Sanders, the linebacker, 45, had to pick up the speedy caver. And really, they had to set up, but they couldn't complete the pass. Second down 10 for the 49. Missouri averaging 206 yards a game. Barry Switzer really enjoyed meeting him, spending some time with him this week. He is a human dynamo. A lot of things happening here at Oklahoma. Adler, a flag on the play, and they're going to blow this play dead. All kinds of mix-up that time as Adler actually collided with somebody. It's illegal procedure against Missouri. That is the first Missouri penalty. So on a second and ten, let's see what Oklahoma elects to do. Oklahoma with three penalties for 23 yards. That'll move it back to the 44-yard line. False start on the offense. It is still second down. So they're going to have to dig themselves out of a hole. Last year, Missouri jumped out on top, led only to have Oklahoma come down to the last series trying to pull the game out. They tore down the goalposts at Perot Field in Columbia after that game. One of the biggest wins they've had in many, many years. Adler back to throw. Dumps it nicely. Off to the running back, Mal Byrne, and he is to the 44-yard line of Oklahoma. A 10-yard pickup on the play. Oklahoma has historically been very tough on the defensive corners. The cornerbacks have been very, very physical. Watch what happens here. They're going to Malvern, 32. It's a soft corner going to the back, out of the backfield. It's just like a running play, a safe play. Ah, Scott Case, don't throw people around after you get out of bounds. Malvern out of Parkway, West High School, Manchester, Missouri, the St. Louis area. Third down coming up, five yards to go. He's in the backfield with Barbosa. Adler having to ad lib a little bit, and he may have a first down, and I think he does. I am really impressed with Adler's ability to run the football. Time and again, he's been in some real difficulty. Now with 32 yards rushing, first down. Watch him scramble. This is what really causes problems for aggressive defenses when you've got a quarterback that scrambles. You've got Lyman looking around, not making anything happen. Marlin makes it on his own. Three minutes. 28 seconds left in this first half. And halftime, Brett and Era scores and highlights. A feature on the University of Kansas trainer, Dean Naismith. Barbosa, now Tracy Mack is coming at fullback. First down for the 41. Adler, gonna run again. Broke it up. Nice play that time. Flying up was Weddington, number 88. Again, Adler just giving this Oklahoma defense fits. As he rolled around, tried to just kind of short toss it, short arm it to the far side, but Weddington was there. Again, Weddington playing in place of Kevin Murphy, who's out with a pinched nerve in the neck. Weddington has been a starter at times, but he's had injuries that's hampered him. He's a converted tight end. 6'2", 240 out of Temple, Texas. Second and 10. Picked up. Bryant over to make the tackle. And you can see why they're so high on number 80. 
Good mobility that time by Rick Bryan. And he throws him for a lot. Number 80, left tackle off of Goody, number 76. He's just sifting. He sees the pressure outside. See, he keeps moving feet parallel, keeps the quarterback out in front of him. That's why they like Ricky Bryan so much. He kept the play out in front of him, kept moving down the line, and then made the play. He was the outstanding lineman in the Sun Bowl. They say he hits the ground going 110%. From Coeda, Oklahoma. They say Broken Era, but the people in Coeda really get upset. I'm glad you pronounced that. I wasn't <laughs> sure. Forgive me if I mispronounced some of them. From the 42, here is Abbott. Open. Down here is White. Touchdown. Craig White. 42 yards, and Missouri's right back in it. the isolation on Craig White to split in 87 down the field he gets a good bump right there now watch him just break all this time Adler's moving around too much cushion by the Oklahoma secondary he just waits on the ball that's drain 33 touchdown Missouri's back in this football game and that is Craig White's first touchdown catch of the year 42 yards Adler again setting it up with that ability to scramble point after attempt by Richmond is up it's good and it's 21-14, and Adler now is 5 of 7 for 93 yards and one touchdown. So twice, Missouri's been down by 14 points, and they've cut it back to 7 with 2.18 to go in this first half. And at halftime, Brent and Era again will mention that they will bring you the scores and the highlights. You've been seeing some of the updates. Big games at Michigan, Purdue, Clemson, Maryland contest. And then, in their own words, the Deaner, Dean Nesmith from the University of Kansas. Boy, he has worked on some men, Wilt Chamberlain, Gail Sayers, Jim Ryan, JoJo White, some of the outstanding athletes. And I might add, a man who's 80-some years young, one of the finest men you'll ever meet. So we're just glad that he can be part of our halftime. Now that Tiger's a little bit happier, I would think. Looks like a couple of times in this game that Missouri is in real trouble. But I think of the character of the team. They really took advantage. They had gave Oklahoma a lot of formations. They gave them a lot of different plays to look at, short passes, inside runs, and then beat them deep on the big play, the touchdown. So Missouri, had, we thought Gary coming in, had a good plan against Oklahoma, and they've been able to implement it. There's the drive, 74 yards. Both these teams have strung them together. In this game, Missouri has 173 yards in total offense. Oklahoma, 270. Of course, Oklahoma's is all on the ground. Burdett will kick off. Dupree, Sims going back for Oklahoma. 2.18 to go in this first half. Very interesting football game. Didn't hit it very far. Back very short. Coming up, Dupree. And the three will give Oklahoma good field position, moving the ball out to the 37, a 16-yard return. Well, let's look offensively and see how these teams have gotten their success, and as we mentioned, all on the ground for the Sooners. That's right. The, th the real key is, is the balance of Missouri. That's exactly what they want to do. Oklahoma's dominating on the run, but scores 21-14, but it's the balance of Missouri and keeping Oklahoma out of step, out of cadence, doing the wrong things at the wrong time. Oklahoma with little time, 2.14. And timeout now by Missouri. Tigers may figure that uh, they might get this football before the half is over. They still have two timeouts left. Oklahoma has not used any of their timeouts. Warren Powers. Warren Powers this year getting a lot of criticism in the St. Louis area. A lot of people thought that this Missouri team would be a better football team than they are. They're 4-3-2. and two. They started out very fast, and those ties really took some of their momentum away from them. I, I think there are a lot of things. Really, Missouri, for all that they've had happen to them this year, really have played outstanding. Now that, you know, you look at their record, you don't want to defend it, but the thing is, they've had disappointments with injuries. They've been unsettled at the quarterback position. Barbosa's been hurt. Durain's been inexperienced. They lost Short Hose, one of the running backs early. They lost Kirtland Thomas, a great receiver. They have just had so many people that have been hurt uh, that have made all the difference in the world. And if they had them all, my goodness, what, what they'd be. And they're a young football team. You look at them, especially on offense, they're going to have a lot of people back for next year. Look at 
as he scores as they go back to the east. This game early starting in the Midwest, so a lot of the scores, the big eight, just starting to come away. In the round reverse to Sewell. Sewell, who scored earlier, breaking inside the 50, and he's to the Missouri 43-yard line. Sewell, who scored earlier that time on the reverse to the 42, a 21-yard pickup. Smith made the stop. And now with 2.05, Oklahoma trying to hurry things up. Looks like Sewell wanted to come off. He's shaken up a little bit, but they're going to keep him in there and try to get another play called and ready to go. Looks like he took a pretty good shot to the stomach. He is hurting. He's bent over a little bit. He's split out along with Carter. Here's a pitch to the play. He fumbles. Who's got it? Missouri has recovered. Now there's a case where they may have hurried too much. Coming up with it was Kevin Potter. Let's see if the, if, if the problem was Kelly Phelps on the pitch or Marcus Dupree. Let's see what happens. There's the pitch. Perfect pitch. What happens, Marcus Dupree is looking at Raymond Harrison, number six. And a little bit more concerned about contact as Kevin Potter falls on it. Kevin Potter, an all-Big 8 performer. He's had a tough year. He broke his ankle in June. Missed the opening game. The senior from St. Louis coming up with the elusive football and now Missouri on the 49-yard line, a minute 51 to go in the first half. Barbosa, now Vern, the running back. Adler wanting to throw, in trouble. He was looking to White, but he didn't clear. One of the points you made, Gary, is that Oklahoma is not a hurry-up type offense. Regardless of the eye formation and being able to throw more out of it, they are not very good at hurrying up, and I think they forced the point. Watch Adler right here. Good fake delay, kind of a bootleg. Comes around to his right. He's going to get pressure from inside all over. That's Ricky Bryan, number 80, and he'll go to the turf. But Oklahoma is not in a tendency to really in a hurry-up style, and you push when you're not accustomed to it. That's a very good point. That's the fourth sack of the game now for Oklahoma. Adler in trouble again, and that's going to be number five. Nope, he gets out of there. Adler gets out, and then it's up. At the 42, Weddington playing very well. Adler's look, no one has been able to clear and give credit to that Oklahoma secondary. Really, Marlon Adler really has brought Missouri to lie. Now he drops back, he's got good protection, it collapses on him. Ricky Bryan, 80, collapses into Conrad Goody, forces him outside, and Mike Weddington, 88, will make the tackle. But the pressure of having a mobile quarterback, Brad Perry probably could not have gotten outside. Adler now has the third and 17. Third down conversions. You see what they've done thus far? A little quarterback draw. Out to the 50. Fumbles the ball. It looks like Missouri recovered at the 45. It'll bring up a fourth down with 17 seconds. And so the issue pretty well coming to a close here in the first half. Conrad Goody fell on the football. What, what happens? It's drop back, draw play. Good line play. The linemen are setting up Oklahoma. That's Benson, number 38, causes the fumble off of the quarterback, Adler. And Goody, big old 76, will find a little toy. Conrad Goody, 6'6 six, six and a half, 260, as the first half has come to a close. A game that's seen twice. Missouri down by 14. The battle back uphill. And now within seven once again. Adler, the big story in his first half, able to give the Tigers that mobility, the ability to throw the football. On the other hand, as expected, Oklahoma running the ball effectively. Oklahoma has established its running game, but I think the point is that you've got to look at how Missouri, each time being down, coming back and having the character take the ball nearly the length of the field. They've not had overly great field position, and they really, Marlon Adler is giving them a total new life. And so, as our halftime comes our way, again, we'll remind you, we'll be updating a lot of the scores, games in the East, some of the highlights. This Oklahoma team ranked 15th in the country. They would like to win this one. Then, uh, if Nebraska defeats Iowa State, move to Lincoln, Nebraska on November 26th. And Steve and I will be there for that game. That will decide who goes to the Orange Bowl, who wins the Big A championship, which has been a very familiar battle each year. Come down to that, Steve, when you were playing at Oklahoma. It's one of the most fierce, fiercely competitive football games, but of course, Barry Switzer said, if we don't get by Missouri, that ball game means very little to them, and they've got to get by Missouri today. And Missouri's going to do all they can to keep that from happening. And so this mystery team 
The Missouri Tigers has shown up here today, and they are the good football team today. They have played a very good football game despite some adversity early. So 21-14 our halftime score. Oklahoma leading Missouri. We'll be going to Brent Musburger in New York after a word from your local station. sophisticated Mazda products. Atari, makers of home video games and home video game systems for fun everyone can share. And by Edna, I'm glad I met ya. Oklahoma with the lead and coming back on the field here in Norman, Oklahoma. And in this first half, statistics, I think one of the big ones is time of possession. There are two keys. As you said, time of possession is one. The other, Oklahoma is dominating the running game, but look at the balance of Missouri. That's exactly what their game plan was. They've been able to implement it in the first half, and now the key is in the first couple of series how they do here in the third quarter. They've kept that ball away from Oklahoma. That's what Warren Powers wanted to do over 16 minutes. And now there's an interesting statistic we're going to show you that really puts this game in perspective. Oklahoma on first downs, they've been able, you know, why throw the football? The 8.9 yards average on first down attempts versus Missouri's 3.5, which is not bad at all, but Oklahoma's ability to be second down and one, second and two, really gives them an advantage in the football game. Well, some other statistics that Mike Swanson, our statistician, comes up with, again pointing out that Oklahoma not having a great deal of success in throwing the football once again. As we look at the quarterback comparisons, and Adler's just done a fine job. Really, 5 of 7 is part of the story, but what he has done when he has not thrown the ball is the other story. That's, those are good stats for him. Kelly Phelps, 0-0, zero, zero, similar to my statistics when I played <laughs> here. But really what the key is is what Adler does after he's forced out and cannot throw the ball. Now, you threw it for over 900 yards one year. I looked that up. 600 another, didn't you? Oh. Anyway, look at this first half comparison. Again, Dupree and Stanley Wilson both being able to run the ball uh, between them 15 times. And look at the average, 5.6 and 5.7. That's not a bad little haul for a running back. And what distribution? One guy's carried the ball one more time, and that's all. And the result's very, very similar. All right. Oklahoma will get the football as we start the second half. Burdett will kick it off. He attempted a field goal in that first half, missing from... 52 yards away, and that set up a drive at the 35-yard line that Oklahoma took advantage of and marched in. In the second quarter, Gary, Missouri controlled the ball nine of the 15 minutes in the second quarter. That's what they've got to do in this third quarter, control the time and the ball. One thing we have to remember is the fourth quarter has been Oklahoma's this year. Missouri has not played well in the fourth quarter, so maybe they have to get something going in this stanza. 21-14. Oklahoma trying to win their seventh straight game. And get ready for that showdown with Nebraska. Burden, a knuckleball. That's a tough one to handle. Sims is going to let it go into the end zone. And that will bring the ball out to the 20-yard line. The Oklahoma Sooners will start from the 20. This football team, the times was just awesome in that first half. It didn't seem to make a lot of difference whether it was Dupree or Wilson or Sims or Ledbetter. All four of those backs were very effective. Up front now, Burks is back in. You might recall he left the game a while. The offensive tackle, number 69. Rocky Hubble is the other one. Parker Williams, the guard. Chuck Thomas is the center. And they go to Dupree. And Dupree drags some people with him across the 25 to the 27. Bobby Bell making the stop out of Lee's Summit, Missouri. He leads the team in sacks with a total of six. Dupree is one of those backs that has to get the ball 25 times a game. He gets more effective with the more work he has. He really is so similar to Herschel Walker in his running style. He kind of just is very deceiving style, kind of just uh, moves very gradually, but when you just can't appear to see what his speed is until you're trying to chase him. They go to the wishbone. Wilson. Wilson, first down across the 40 to the 42. Boy, he got to the line in a hurry, didn't he? Kevin Potter made the stop for the Missouri Tigers. And again, every time they've got a wishbone, it's done very well for them. 
inside play. Watch the linebackers. They go with the flow. They're outside. They really stunt themselves out of the play, reacting too quick to the movement of the backfield, and Stanley breaks into the line and past the line of scrimmage for good game. Barry Switzer will be the first guy to tell you that they hadn't moved Wilson to fullback. He probably would be one of the leading rushers in the country, probably have a couple of 200-yard days. Kick to Wilson again, and Wilson goes to another first down. The Missouri end of the field at the 48-yard line. When you run the wishbone, you got to take the fullback away, and that's the reason they moved Wilson to that position. And you can see why he is so effective. In Oklahoma's offense this year, be it in the eye or the wishbone, the key player is the fullback. You have got to eliminate, slow down, stop, beat, whatever you can do to the fullback to cause his yardage to be minimal. Then you get a predictable situation on the corners with the, with the halfbacks. You know where they're going to run, and, you're gonna, and you know that they are going to be running outside. Well, they're just short of the first down, so they have a second down. Again, there's that first down yardage again. They had 8.9 average, and they picked up nine, almost 10 yards on that one. They continue to do well on that initial down. They want to throw the ball more. In fact, Barry Switzer and his coaches, they've been trying to recruit a junior college quarterback, looking at some different people. They want to throw. They want to still use the wishbone, use the eye as more or less their face offense. Wilson, Dupree in the backfield. Second down, less than a yard. Sewell also back there. And they're going to get the first down. Wilson carrying. Wilson to the 46-yard line. It's reminiscent of moments in that first half when Oklahoma just came right at them. In the full wishbone. Watch the line play. Watch the block. Let's see what kind of effort we get. We get a double team on the right side with the tackle Burks and Williams. A good line play by Missouri. They're able to make penetration. They came off the double team block and made the stop. They already, Oklahoma already has 318 yards rushing. They're averaging 328 a game. Sewell this time. And Sewell inside the 45 to the 43. Remember, their biggest reminiscent of moments in that first half when Oklahoma just came right at them. Again, the full wishbone. Watch the line play. Watch the block. Let's see what kind of effort we get. We get a double team on the right side with the tackle Burks and Williams. But good line play by Missouri. They're able to make penetration. They came off of the double team block and made the stop. They already, Oklahoma already has 318 yards rushing. They're averaging 328 a game. Sewell this time. And Sewell inside the 45 to the 43. Remember, their biggest day was 556 yards. Sewell scored that touchdown in the first half. He wears number 13, and a lot of people say, is he superstitious? He says, no, he wore that number in high school. But also, his parents were married on that date, and so he wanted to commemorate that date by wearing number 13. When the coaches describe Steve Sewell, they say he's the epitome of what you want in a football player. Second down and seven, Dupree. Dupree will be short of the first down. Rod Skillman making the tackle. And this drive is taking some time. 12.50 as they relentlessly move it. Just as number 99, outstanding all Big 8 per performer. He's working right there on Williams and Burks. That time he gets tied up too long with the blocker that's on him and lets the play go by. Dupree, Wilson in the backfield. Third down, a yard to go from the... Wishbone, Wilson, and Wilson has the first down. Nothing deceptive about this. It's just good football by this big red machine. There have been three teams in history that have averaged over 400 yards a game rushing. Oklahoma was two of them. UCLA was the third, and that was when UCLA was running the wishbone, and Pepper Rogers was the coach there. That's an awesome statistic when you stop and think about it. Sewell in motion on a first down pitch to Dupree. Dupree to the 25-yard line. Going to be three yards short of the first down. Bobby Bell stops Dupree. Dupree is not a good practice player, and they think after spring practice and his sophomore year, he'll be better yet. Watch Dupree. He really doesn't look like he's, he's reacting, doesn't look as though he's running that hard, but he just kind of smooth glides, kind of a gliding type runner, so similar to Herschel. When you look at him, he runs very similar to Herschel. He's a little taller, I think, but size-wise, he'll be about the same, I imagine, when he hits the weights. He has 66 yards for the day. Wilson, this time a traffic jam. He's inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. 
Well, Missouri's offense is going to have to wait a while the way this is going. They're still standing by. 11-23, this is the initial drive of the second half, and Barry Switzer, right now his team moving the football. What I think Oklahoma's challenging Missouri, they're saying we're going to come right at you, Missouri, behind Paul Parker, the left guard, Chuck Thomas, the center, and Steve Williams, the right guard. Most of the running has been inside the guards. Third and one, Wilson breaks the tackle, and it's an end result, he has a first down. Kevin Potter making the stop. Well, they've had now five of seven on third down conversions, but they've had only a yard or less than a yard on most of those. Again, running inside, watch the blocks inside. The linebacker steps right up in there. That's Jay Wilson, 34, poor tackle. He had Stanley Wilson right in front of him and doesn't make the tackle. I think Stanley Wilson's made a lot of people miss some tackles. He was growing up in the Los Angeles area. A lot of people thought he'd go to USC, but he liked to watch Oklahoma on television, and they're glad to have him out here. Give to Dupree. Dupree to the 12. Remember now, this drive starting on the 20. That's the 11th play of this drive. They just continue to hammer the football at him. Bring it up second down. Six yards to go. The Missouri coaches felt like that they had to win the battle inside the tackles with Skillman at right tackle, Lockett at nose, and Joseph at the other tackle. And right now, Oklahoma's challenging them and going right in between those tackles. Wilson Dupree and Winters in the backfield from the 11-yard line. Second and six. Phelps pitching to Dupree. Dupree carrying that ball away from his body. He's going to be out of bounds at about the line of scrimmage. I would imagine, Steve, you've heard a few coaches yell at you about carrying a ball like that. Well, unfortunately, at Oklahoma, they have made it habit a K too much. Watch this. Option play. They've got the lead block. Parker out there. Watch Dupree. I imagine Coach Switzer will get in team meeting tomorrow and be a little upset that Marcus Dupree is carrying the ball like a non-athlete. <laughs> They're going to lose about a yard on that play. Looks like playing flag football. I, I see that in flag foot, football around here. <laughs> well, Dupree can uh, make some things happen, can't he? 70 yards now, 13 carries. Helps the throw! Touchdown! Their first touchdown pass of the year, and guess who it's to? On to that! The first catch of his career. I don't know who is more surprised. Kelly Phelps, Fontenet. What's this? You're thinking option play all day. Counter option fake. Fontenet, the tight end, gets behind everybody. Secondary all day long thinking he's not going to catch a pass. It's in your thinking. Touchdown. I got to believe they were determined somehow they were going to break that long dry spell, and they have Culver on the point after. It's 28 14. Montanet had never caught a pass in his career, now, and this is the first touchdown pass of the year. Oklahoma, they've been running, running, running. All of a sudden, defense is thinking run. Fontenet slides in, makes the block look like it's going to be a running play, goes in the back of the end zone. It's a touchdown. Oklahoma 28-14. Turnaround momentum's on Oklahoma's side. We'll be back and see what happens. For the third time in this game, Missouri trails by 14. Oklahoma throwing their first touchdown pass, and I'm sure the Oklahoma fans wanting the nation to know <laughs> that they've broken that long dry spell of not throwing a touchdown pass. Culver, another one of those high kicks. Going to be fielded short by Missouri, and they'll bring it out to the 35-yard line. So Fontenet has taken that stigma off of his shoulders of never catching a pass. How would you like to be remembered in history as the only person in history at Oklahoma never to catch a pass? Well, he's he has struggled just trying to catch the football. I mean, the coaches were very honest with us as we look at the scoring drive. 13 plays, 80 yards, 503. But he uh, he really got behind. Oklahoma is making him think run, concentrate run, and then they throw the ball. And so a 14-point lead. Malvern and Troy, they had to wait a long time to get on the field offensively. A drive over five minutes. Adler in trouble. That's five sacks by Oklahoma, and it was Bryant again, and Bryant is just playing up a storm down there. Then all over the place. And at the 32, a loss on the play. But just didn't anybody clearing. Adler's had some time, but no one open. There is Slater, 68. He's been having some problems. He's been out with a sprained ankle. They feel he's the most underrated player in the league out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
Toe for the 32. Second down now. 13 yards to go for the Tigers. Arbosa, Malvern in the backfield. White. Caber. Split out. Adler. Going to Barbosa. And he's gobbled up for about a yard gain. Case and Chip over there. Oklahoma reacting extremely well on the play. Brings up third down. Missouri going back to what they were running in the second quarter, the latter part, a ball control throwing type game. Short passes, try to pick, take advantage of the soft corners. Barbosa gets the ball, Case and Ship make the tackle. Playing a little tighter on the play as it goes to the outside. You see Kevin Murphy's back in there. He was out in the first half with a pinched nerve in his neck. Number 39, the right defensive end. Third down, 11. Adler throwing deep. White is the inbound. They're going to rule it. Completion. He's inbounds. He's inside the 45 to the 42 of Oklahoma. 24-yard completion to White, who earlier caught that touchdown pass. Good play by Marlon Adler, the quarterback. He rolls, puts pressure. Ricky Bryant has got outside support. Somebody else falls down. Watch Bryant there, pushes a little pressure. Watch the pass. Craig White, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Both feet inbounds, good catch, concentration. Big play, Missouri. He had a 42-yard touchdown catch. Now a 24-yard grab. 7 of 9 now for Adler. 119 yards. Barbosa, Barbosa to the 40-yard line. And that was a big play for Missouri. They would have been kicking the football after that long drive. They didn't want to give it back to Oklahoma. Now instead, they're still alive, approaching the 40-yard line of Oklahoma. Again, it was Adler sprint out ability. We have a man shaken up. It's Laster, Bernard Laster, number 67, a junior from Marshall, Missouri, who's been a two-year starter for this team, and he's experiencing some difficulties. Near the conclusion of today's game, and all of our CBS NCAA football telecasts will be selecting the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each competing team. And Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each MVP school to assist qualified students in all chosen academic disciplines. Twelfth year that Chevrolet scholarship program has been in effect, and we at CBS are very pleased to be part of it. So Steve Davis, myself, along with our producer Jim Summon, will vote. Sometimes we don't always agree. But we will come up with an MVP for both sides. From the 40-yard line, second down, seven. Adler over the middle, Gibbler. Gibbler couldn't locate the football. Gibbler's been very quiet today. He has 99 catches in his career. That time, not able to come up with it. He has not caught a pass today, and that brings up third down. He didn't see the football. Well, he didn't. They had a good plan. They were going against Oklahoma's split secondary. Oklahoma was divided with what we call halves, two defensive backs playing half the field apiece, and he was splitting it right down the middle, and it just seemed like that he was out of position and didn't expect the football. Greg Crawl has come in at guard, replacing the injured laughter. He's out of St. Louis. Third down, seven. Adler going down here again. It's White. But defending was Case. White and Caber were very close to each other inside the five-yard line. Last year, we understand, sustained an ankle injury. So Missouri's drive ends. Fourth down. But they are testing that Oklahoma secondary. Adler will kick. Case will go back. Now, the last time they went back, Dupree went back and called for a fair catch of the five. So they got Case now on the short punt situation at the 7.43 mark of the third quarter. Adler gets it very high. And Missouri is down there, and they covered well. However, it bounces back out to the 11-yard line. 29-yard kick. Oklahoma with a 14-point lead. They have the football. Seven and a half to go in the third quarter. Not over. Bad. Let's go back on that third down play, Steve Davis. What's the reaction of the linebackers? They're reading what the quarterback does. They drop, and now watch them. They'll set right here. They've got to go underneath. That's the underneath coverage that you want to look at and concentrate. Now they see the ball thrown, and they'll go on back further and follow the ball. The good eye contact of the linebackers setting and reacting to the play. We got the idea they were expecting a pass. They were really back on that one. From the 11-yard line, Ledbetter and Sims in the backfield. Sims. And Sims will advance to the 14. Robert Curry made the stop. And now for another NCAA report. Let's go to New York. Here's Brent. Gary, we 
we could have a big upset brewing down south. Auburn has just come back. Watch the bootleg here by Randy Campbell. He gets around the Georgia defense. They now lead the Bulldogs seven to three. Let's go back to Gary. Wow, we had the upsets last week. We might have another one. Anybody going to be unbeaten this year? Led better carrying the football on a second down and eight. Advances out to the 19. He's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. It'll bring up a third down. Helps with a touchdown run and a touchdown pass today. Again, let's watch Randy Justice, 99, react to the play inside, get pushed and shoved. All you want to do is move down the line of scrimmage and keep your feet. He did just that. The ball was away from him, and he executed, went down the line, pursued. Ghost is coming in here with 10 tackles for a loss. He has been a very steady performer for Missouri. Inside the Sewell, I believe he does have the first down. Out to the 24. A little inside scissor action. New wrinkle. Sam Harris. Sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri made the stop. So Oklahoma continues to move it. Now, we talked about how effective Oklahoma has been in rushing. We're going to support our case with these statistics. Really, look at that. Over the, since 1971, the national rushing title for team has gone to Oklahoma six of those times. No other team since 1937 has dominated like Oklahoma in the rush. And they have 365 yards prior to this carry as Sims brings it out to the 31-yard line. Jay Wilson made the stop. This is going to be one of those big statistical days on the ground for Oklahoma. Trying to bring up second down, four yards to go. I think it's interesting to me that Barry Switzer and talking to him doesn't know if anybody will ever average that again, over 400 yards. And the reason is, is the new design and push towards the passing game. That better Sims in the backfield. Sewell also back there and a flag. Penalty flag at the 31-yard line. Illegal procedure against Oklahoma. So that will stall this drive momentarily. Missouri needs to hold them here. They need to get the football. They've been on the field most of this third quarter defensively. A false start on the offense. It is still second down. Fourth penalty now against Oklahoma. Let's watch Justice again. 99, the big tackle. This time he shifts. Well, he's... Oh, he says, guys, I don't want to play very hard. Hey, he's across from Steve Williams. They call him Dr. Death. He's a wrestler. Professional wrestler. From Lakewood, Colorado. Sim on a second down and eight after that penalty of five yards. And Sims gets across the 25 to the 27. Bobby Bell again making the stop for Missouri. This is a critical quarter for Missouri because they have the win. They need the ball and take advantage of the win behind their back. CBS, glad to be bringing you this NCAA football game. 1963, they were the last time that we were able to bring them to you. And I know we have had a lot of fun here in Norman, Oklahoma, the hospitality. See what makes this big red machine work down here. Third down, six, Phelps. Oh, no catch, almost made. That would have been a great grab if he'd have been able to hang on. That was Cluis, 82. And so it comes to a fourth down. Phelps, this game has opened it up a little bit. He threw that one touchdown pass. He's rolled around. He scrambled one time on a touchdown run. And Oklahoma with this 14-point lead will send Keeling back to kick. Well, what a career he's had. He has been a very fine kicker. And bad ankle and all, he'll get this one away from the 12-yard line. 4.41 to go, third quarter. Big rush, almost got it. Dolby's going to let it hit. They were so close to blocking that punt. It was Batichek, who's already blocked four kicks this year, that almost got that one. But he did make Keeling kick that ball only 22 yards. Missouri with excellent field position at the Oklahoma 49-yard line when we return. Matichak, number 20, the far right of your screen. Watch him come. Now, this time, he doesn't fully extend his body or probably could have blocked it. Didn't extend. Has 4-3-5 speed. Here again, the close-up comes. Didn't quite extend. If he had stretched on out, he might have touched part of it. Our director, Larry Cavallino, with the good pictures there. Matichak from Joliet, Illinois. His father played football at Notre Dame, and he said, watch this specialist. What a job he does on blocking punts and field goals. 
Missouri on this first down with Tracy Mack now in at fullback. Hammers it to the 41. This is the first time in the game now that Missouri has started a drive and Oklahoma's into the field. And they can climb right back into this game. Three times they've been down by 14. Twice they've been able to cut it to seven. And they're trying to do that right now with 4.13 left in this third quarter. That was Max's first carry. He was an outstanding high school football player, Webster Grove. They won the state championship when he was playing there. He and Barbosa in the backfield. Second down, a gain of eight on that last play. Up the middle. Here comes Mack again. And Mack to the 26. Case Hayworth made the stop. Mack has outstanding speed. If he could stay healthy, what a player he might be. He's no, nursing a shoulder injury. Let's watch the left side of that line. I mean, the linebacker's walled off. Dempsey holds the linebacker. Everybody gets a good block and explodes into the backfield. Mack gives Missouri more running punts. He has a 4.3740 time. That was a 15-yard gain. He has 23 yards now on two carries. First down at the 26-yard line of Oklahoma. Barbosa inside the 25 to the 23. John Blake making the stop for Oklahoma, the nose guard. One of the concerns of Barry Switzer is John Blake, the nose guard. He is small. He gets pushed around a lot. This time he gets pushed away into the play, makes the tackle. Really concerned about going against Nebraska and having against, going against a pretty good player. By the name of Dave Remington. <laughs> exactly. Will that be some matchup? Second down now. Eight yards to go. Adler on the option. Pitches back to Mack. Mack gets to about the 20-yard line. So they're going to be four yards short of the first down. Running the option to the short side of the field, and they ran out of room. I'm sure that Oklahoma really didn't anticipate the option play as much as we're seeing it out of Missouri. They're coming down the line of scrimmage. What's the flow of the defensive line? But what happens, Oklahoma closes too quickly on the pitch, and there's not enough support. And that's why Tracy breaks it down the sidelines for about five or six more yards than what he probably should have had. Good play by Matt. Here's an important play now for Missouri. Third down and four from the 20-yard line. They trail by 14. Adler to Mack. Mack fighting. Did he get the first down? He's going to be very close. Blake made the stop along with Kevin Murphy. Tracy Mack giving this Missouri team a lift. They're now over 100 yards rushing on the day. And it looks like they're going to bring the chains in. And will. Well, if you have a fourth down, do you go for it or settle for a field goal? I really think that the way Missouri has dominate, dominated Oklahoma's defense in this particular drive, it might be a good play to try to run, get a first and ten. They're going to get, if they don't make it, very short, about a foot. If they don't make it, they're going to give Oklahoma the ball at the 16-yard line. So a decision for Warren Powers, and they're going to go for it. some misdirection type play inside. I really don't know that they'll try to go outside against Oklahoma's speed. Maybe something inside where they've had some success. Look at Oklahoma down inside, Gary. Two tight ends, Davis and Gibbler. have come in now for the Tigers. Fourth down? I don't know. It didn't look like there was much movement on the speak. Great reaction defensively by Oklahoma. There just wasn't any room, and I don't think he went anywhere on that play. I don't know. I think the headline from spot, though, is a little bit uh, closer to first and ten than we might think. Well, I'll just I don't stay know. out of it then. What, what does it matter? They're going to tell us, aren't they? <laughs> John Madden used to tell me it's a left foot or a right foot that always determines what's the first down. That headline foot. Was it a right foot or a left foot? It looked like left foot to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Important measurement. They held him. Now, wait a minute. They're still moving the chains. Oklahoma went off the field. They're still measuring now. How about that? Oklahoma prematurely thought they held, and they're still measuring. It's going to be by committee, looks like. They got it. They got it. I can't believe it. That's great. Oh, you talk about a crowd reaction. Oklahoma's defense went roaring off the field. The crowd yelling, and now, in a matter of seconds, the emotion has changed completely. That's right. And the, the funny thing, we're sitting up here, all the players of Oklahoma said it was not a first and ten. The official never really said it, and that's why Missouri said, hey, guys, wait a second. Well, they tried to help the official with that measurement. They didn't intimidate him at all. Oh, what a big play for Missouri. It really is. First down now. At 
at the 16-yard line. Missouri trailing by 14. Let's see if they can capitalize on that. A give to Barbosa inside the 15. He'll move it to the 13-yard line. Bob Slater made the stop. So Missouri still very much alive if they can capitalize on this. 2-10 left in this third quarter. I thought it was a left foot. <laughs> <laughs> but Warren Powers, he wasn't sure. I, you could see the bench getting closer and closer to where they were measuring. But he still has a life. They actually marked this ball to 14. He only gained on that play a couple of yards. Second down eight. 28, 14. Oklahoma leads Missouri. A reverse pitch. In trouble. Barbosa can't get to it. Back there is Stanberry. He's got it. issue right now. Adler that time, bad angle on the pitch. And so we're going to have a timeout with 1.41 left to go in the third quarter. The Oklahoma defense holds. All right, Steve, let's reconstruct the turnover. Here's the angle down low. Watch Adler come down. Now, two things. Murphy is on a hard stunt, the defensive end. Stanberry, number 19, he's on a stunt also right there, and he's going to take the ball care, the pitch man away, and all of a sudden, because of the hard stunt by Murphy, the ball's loose, he falls on it. Good, hard effort by Oklahoma's defense. There's where you have to read, you have to hang on to that football or pitch, and obviously he should have held on to the ball, the turnover, setting the ball up now to 27 for Oklahoma. The three and Wilson in the backfield, and Wilson carrying straight ahead. Interestingly enough, that was the seventh time this year that Missouri has turned the ball over inside the opponent's 30-yard line. So that measurement that caused such a controversy, the next play, it doesn't make any difference anyway, or I should say the next two plays. Wilson advancing the ball to the 29. It'll be second down eight. Well, as we said at the beginning of the show, that turnovers have been the real problem, Missouri, and Warren Powers has been most concerned about it all year long. He has some great backs in this game. There's another one, Herschel Walker, and we're going to have an update on him in just a moment. Here is Dupree. Dupree advancing out to the 27. Well, he's going to lose some yardage on that play. We mentioned Herschel Walker in Georgia might be in trouble. Let's get an update on Walker the Bulldogs with Brent Musburger. Terry, here's that man, Herschel Walker from the deep eye. He gets outside on Auburn, 47 yards, the first junior to rush more than 5,000 yards. And Georgia now leads Auburn by three. Back to Gary. Well, the Bulldogs with Walker, I don't know if anybody can beat him. So now they've taken that lead. This is going to be now a third down, virtually 10 yards to go for Oklahoma. Well, on a rollout, a flag on the play. Throw back, and it's bad. It's intercepted. Rod Skillman. Skillman has it on a deflection at the 15. There's a penalty flag, though. The penalty flag went into the air about the time the ball was snapped. Let's see who it's against. Boy, great reaction that time by Skillman. It is going to go against Oklahoma. They'll refuse a penalty, and Missouri is still in there fighting for it. Several things happened. First of all, I believe it was Paul Clues, the split in, number 82. Offense. It's declined. It's first down. You will not see it this time. Clues is the split in down at the bottom of the screen. He was not set. He was not set. Now watch Phelps. The ball's deflected by 95, half sails, 51, falls on it. I mean, Rod Skillman makes the interception. Big play, Missouri. So they're right back in it at the 17. Boy, they have backed Oklahoma up in this quarter now. 20 seconds left in it. Adler trying to capitalize it. The wing position is Tabor. To Tracy Mack, nothing on the play. Mack hit first by Kevin Murphy. Murphy was out of there for a while. He's come back in, and is he playing well? They feel he has the chance to be the best defensive end they've had here at Oklahoma. Just a sophomore out of Plano, Texas. They might have gotten a half yard. We have a man shaken up for Oklahoma on the play. And it's Murphy, the man we were just talking about. This will be the second time he's had to leave the football game. And coming in will be Whitington, who played well in his stead. Seven seconds left in this third quarter. The 
ball resting at the 16 and a half yard line. Oklahoma leading by 14. This is the second time now that Missouri's had it inside the 20 yard line in this third quarter. The last time they lost it, and that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. It's Oklahoma 28, Missouri 14. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of today's game is sponsored by Toyota, who to reminds you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. Anheuser-Busch St. Louis Brewers of Michelob. Some things speak for themselves. And by Hager Slacks and Sport Coats that make you look and feel your best. to go in this fourth quarter. Missouri with a second down, 10 yards to go at the 16 and a half yard line. That cameraman has got to be cold. We're cold up here in the booth. There we are. The wave and they get do they get combat pay up there or hazard duty pay? What is it they get up there? Anyway, this in the past games has not been a good quarter to Missouri. They have been outscored in the fourth quarter 53 to 12 in the three losses and two ties. So they'd like to start doing something about that as we begin the fourth quarter. Mike out, White, along with Caber. And they're rolling. Look out. Goodlow got him. Darrell Goodlow hit him from the blind side. That's the sixth sack of the game. Oklahoma. Let it all out this time. Goodlow's on blitz. Oh, it's Stan Berry, number 19, from the backside. Goodlow, 46. Adler never saw him. Both linebackers are right there in his face. Kevin Murphy was also out there at the defensive end. Goodlow was the Big 8 Defensive Player of the Week for his play against Oklahoma State earlier this year. He had 14 tackles, 11 solos in that game. A big sack there. Third and 17 now for the Tigers. Another blitz. And they're getting out of trouble and buried at the 25, and they're sending the whole student body after him right now. Gary Sanders made the stop. And there no chance on the last two plays. Seven sacks in the game. And the line of scrimmage to 25-yard line. And it's fourth down. Fourth down and a long ways to go. Fourth and 19. And they're looking for a play. They're going to go for it. They figure no field goal at this particular juncture of the game, trailing by 14 points. Fourth down. Early on the fourth down, they got it, but they didn't have this many yards to go. They blitzed the last two plays. Let's see if they do this time. Have it back. In trouble. He's grounded up the 35-yard line. What an awesome effort defensively by Oklahoma. Remember, they started at the 16 and a half yard line, and in three plays, they're back at the 35 yard line. So the line of scrimmage will actually be the 34. It was Boy, they good, liked that one out there. It, it was a good call. It would have been a 42 yard field goal against the win. I think the other thing that's significant is the fact that in all three plays, Missouri was, went to straight drop back, and the blitz came from outside. So you've got the quarterback in position. They probably should have gone a little bit outside. Oh, he tried to shove it a little bit there right at the last. A little razzle dazzle by Missouri. It's 28 14. Yeah, we're we're really back getting back up right. on that one, huh? We'll be back. on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. 13.30 left to go in this game. NCAA football on CBS. As Oklahoma getting closer and closer to that collision they're going to have November 26th with Oklahoma for the Big A title. Phelps giving off to Ledbetter who's in at fullback now. Ledbetter to the 35-yard line, and that's all. Well, Missouri had some chances, didn't they? They were close to taking it in on two occasions. One time they turned it over, and then the three straight losses. And now Oklahoma with 13.09 would like to get some ball control going. They'd like to just move the football like that five-minute drive they had when they started this second half. Bill Earthman now is in a tight end for Oklahoma. Led better Sims in the backfield. Fumble! And it looks like Oklahoma has recovered. 
at the 32-yard line. Bud's going to bring up about 12 yards to go. Paul Parker, the All-Big 8 candidate at guard, came up with the elusive football. Paul Parker, 62. Watch him. He's a left guard. They think he's the best Oklahoma lineman. Now, he's... Nah, that's not very good blocking there, Paul Parker. <laughs> but all of a sudden, he sees the ball. You know, every time we see these replays, you want to say, here's a great block. That time, he didn't block anybody. They won't have that on the highlight no, film. it won't be on the highlight film at all. Third down now, 11 yards to go. Phelps rolling out, and he's going to be dropped at the 36, and so Oklahoma did not get that ball control going. They're going to have to kick it. Kevin Potter up to make the stop. This is a gritty, determined Missouri team. They have always been so well thought of as a former Oklahoma player, and I know this group of Sooners, they look at Missouri as just a headache because they are so tenacious on defense. They play such good, fundamentally sound football on defense. They are tough. Keeling's average really suffering today due to that ankle injury, and he'll kick this one to Dolby number four. Dolby hasn't had a chance to return one. 11 and a half minutes left in this game. Rush. Kick to Dolby from the 23. He's got a little bit of an alley to the 40. He's to the 50. Cuts back to the 40. He's to the Oklahoma 37-yard line. Outstanding wall was set up. A 41-yard kick, a 40-yard return by Dolby. Dolby, a sophomore from Waukegan, Illinois. He came in here third in the Big 8 in punt returns, averaging seven and a half a return. The punt didn't hold as high as probably what Michael Keeling wanted. Dolby gets to the wall, gets a couple of good blocks. Missouri, the last two times, had the ball to 49, the 17, couldn't get anything going on the scoreboard. Now they have it at the 36-yard line. Tracy Mack, he'll lose yardage back out to the 41-yard line. Kevin Murphy, boy, what a game Murphy is playing. He grounds him back out to the 41. Missouri's been in reverse now the last four plays. They have lost 22 yards in their last four plays. Next. Following Brandon Arrow with the scoreboard show, the lightweight championship fight, Boom Boom Mancini, going against Duke Lu Kim. Should be a great fight right here on CBS Sports. From the 41, Drain, Barbosa in the backfield. Second down, 14 for the Tigers. Ever straight back again. Time to throw to Caver. Caver inside the 20. He's to the 19-yard line. Well, he hadn't had time to throw previously, but he did there, and Drain stops Caver. First down for the Tigers. Again, the crossing route, Oklahoma is in halves. They have two deep backs. He's going to go right across the middle, inside, underneath. 33 is Drain. He's too soft on him, and you don't give Caver very much room, or he makes big plays after big plays. Boy, he is some player. Caver setting up the 19, and Missouri is knocking on the door again. Drain, Barbosa in the backfield. Boy, they've been fighting hard to get it in. Let's see if they can this time. Adler back, rolling around, looking for additional time. Intercepted. It's picked off. And that is Benson, the linebacker. Thomas Benson, his first interception of the year. I know exactly how Marlon Adler feels. Watch this. He he senses pressure, but all of a sudden the pressure breaks down because he gets around it, and he doesn't have to hurry his throw. Nobody was there, but he threw it in the hands of Thomas Benson. He forced the ball. Now you have a chance to go make the tackle, but he forced the ball. Shouldn't have done it. Benson out of Ardmore, Oklahoma. He had an interception last year. He gets his first of the year. They have it at the 30-yard line. From the 30. Oklahoma, after the interception by Benson, they have a 14-point lead, 10.45 to go. Winners goes in motion. The pitch to the three, and the three breaks out across the 40. Here he goes! The three will take it all away. Touchdown! run of the year over 60 yards this one going 70 yards and he has 138 yards on the day on 15 carries he's just a freshman hello 
Philadelphia, Mississippi. Watch Marcus Dupree breaks, gets good blocks. Paul Parker, 62. Watch him run over Raymond Harrison. Now it's 4-5 speed to the end zone. Well, he's the all-time freshman rusher at Oklahoma. He needed only 70 yards coming in here. To move ahead of George Rhymes, he has 138, so he has a little cushion with a game to go. It's now 35-14. Look again at this 70-yard run. Now what's the free? Gets good blocks out of Stanley Wilson, Paul Parker, right there. That, he ought to be going down. But for some reason, 233 pounds didn't give. And it's a race, a track meet. It's not even a race, though. Oh, and he's turned this all over, huh? Boy, what a great freshman. Well, oh, he's unbelievable. But T-Chick just disappeared behind it. Just 10 seconds to run that. They were kidding last week. You ran 80 yards to 12 seconds. He said, I thought it was faster than that. <laughs> Here is Caber. Caber coming out across the 30, out to the 35. So Missouri trailing by the most they've trailed this game, 21 points, with 10-29 left. It's been a frustrating year in the fourth quarter for Missouri, and it continues to be. Dupree, 70-yard dash. Just amazing what kind of career he's going to have. They have three Heisman Trophy winners at Oklahoma. All of the running backs and the three before it's all over might be the fourth. Billy, in this, in this fourth quarter, in the latter part of the third quarter, it was Oklahoma's defense that has made the difference. Not the offense, the defense. From the 35, Adler coming right back at him. Complete to Eric Troy. Kevin Murphy, another tackle. Boy, he's been all over. And the forward progress, well, let's see. Do they lose some yardage on the play? Let's see where they mark it. Got to bring up. Second down and 11. They lost the yard. That shows you the mobility of Murphy, how he got out there on that little screen or flare pass. Ten minutes now left in the game. The sun coming through here in Norman, Oklahoma. Tabor to the near side split up. Troy and Drain the running backs. Adler. He hits Drain, and Drain will make it to the 35. That's about the original line of scrimmage. Third down coming up. Well, Oklahoma getting closer and closer to that battle with Nebraska. Now, Nebraska's game starting after this one. They're playing Iowa State. <laughs> Both those teams will be going in there unbeaten in the Big 8. The winner to go to the Orange Bowl. A lot of rumors about the loser, where they might end up. Third down now, nine yards to go. The both teams are sure to some ball bursts if they win today. There's a flag. And Adler will have to come this spring this play to a grinding halt. You've got to give Adler a lot of credit. He's taken a beating in this game, but he continues to, to battle back against this Oklahoma defense that had the ball and the drive starting at the 49, the 17, and the 36-yard line and held him each time. It's still third down. The legal procedure. Third down coming up, 15 yards. Well, you look at this backfield. Adler's a sophomore. Barbosa's a freshman. Troy's a freshman. Malvern's a sophomore. Max a sophomore. And Drain's a freshman. Young team. Adler, what a catch. That is Caver. who made a fine grab, but that is back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's all. Well, it's going to bring up still 10 yards to go. making the stop. Friendly for you, most of you along the regional network, we're going to be switching to the Clemson and Maryland game. However, viewers in Missouri and Oklahoma will continue to see the Tigers and Sooners until the conclusion of this game. So we'll be doing that very shortly. The kick by Adler. Bearcats called for by Case at the 33-yard line. 8.22 left in the game. A 32-yard kick. So now let's go back to New York. Let's join Brett Musburger, who is going to set up that Clemson and Maryland football game. Thirty-five 
14 our score here. 8.22 to go. Oklahoma has the ball at the 33-yard line. Tough pitching back to Sim. And Sims advancing to the 38-yard line. Robert Curry over to make the stop. Steve, you got to look back at the start of this year for Oklahoma. West Virginia came out and just passed them dizzy that one day. They came back, beat Kentucky. Then USC shut them out. The first shutout they had suffered in 181 consecutive games. That's a long time now. You almost forget about that when you see the team play like it is now. Second down and five yards to go. Ledbetter. Ledbetter still on his feet across the 50. And there is a penalty flag at the 40-yard line. And so the line of scrimmage marked at the 47. It would be a first down, but a penalty is going to go against Oklahoma. So that'll bring it back. Oklahoma last year beaten by Nebraska. Nebraska won unbeaten in Big 8 play. But seemingly every year it comes down to either Norman or Lincoln as the deciding spot as to who's going to go to the On the offense, still second down. It appears as though a third team of the Big 8, Kansas State, if they could beat Oklahoma State this week, finish with a win against Colorado, they could go to a bowl. There is Nebraska. There's the score. Leading 14-7 in the second quarter. After the penalty, a pitch back to Sims. Sims to about the 35. It was a second down 10 as Jay Wilson made the stop. Pittsburgh, after that upset, rolling over Army. Look at this, fourth quarter, Clemson. That's nine. The game will decide who at least has a tie in the ACC. Both of them have to play another game in the ACC. Michigan, they're on their way to Pasadena. Boy, what a year they've had again. Alabama trailing Southern Mississippi. Ooh, Alabama's already lost two games. This is Steve Sewell. Sewell advancing across the 35 to the 37. And so, Oklahoma now is going to have to kick the ball. Keeling comes hobbling on. Florida. There's Tennessee. They've been an unpredictable team this year. They, of course, upset Alabama earlier in the year. Dolby goes back. He had a 40-yard return the last time for Missouri. Keeling to kick at the 628 mark. Dolby trying to get over there. He can't get to it. And it's going to roll all the way down to about the two. Keeling, who's been struggling today, got a 61-yard kick off of that. So that'll bring his average back. There he goes hobbling off. We saw him yesterday. He had it heavily taped. And he was hoping he'd be able to place kick as well as punt. But they took the place kicking away from him. Following our game, and I'm really looking forward to this, and I hope you'll take time to watch this. On CBS Sports Saturday is a very special relationship between Landon Turner, the outstanding forward center for Indiana, who had that tragic automobile accident. The year they won the NCAA championship, he was a junior. He would have come back for his senior year. And it'll get into the relationship between Coach Bobby Knight as well as Landon Turner. Little mix-up in the backfield. That'll be following our game. Eric Troy eventually was able to get the ball out across the five to the seven-yard line. Looks like Adler may be a little shaken up on that play. He's going to be all right. From the seven-yard line, it'll be second down and six yards to go. 6-0-2 left in this game. Ship has come out of the game. Jerry Sanders replaces him at line. From the seven-yard line, it'll be second down and six yards to go. 6-0-2 left in this game. Ship has come out of the game. Jerry Sanders replaces him at linebacker. The numbers one and two rushing teams, Nebraska and Oklahoma, will meet on November 26th. They get it by a throw pass. Here is to give up the middle to Malvern, and Malvern out to the 10-yard line. And it'll bring up third down and three. Let's check some other scores. Vanderbilt has had a pretty good year this year. Ohio State with Northwestern. Ohio State will finish the year 
against Michigan next week. Wisconsin and Iowa, that's being played in Iowa City. Illinois leading Indiana. And Oklahoma State leading Kansas State. Kansas State really needs that win to get to a bowl. It's an important game for uh, Coach Dickey at Kansas State. Kansas State and Virginia, the only two major college teams ever to go to a bowl game. Pass intended for Cable. And it's fourth down. Drain defending our play. Cable's really played well today. for 49. He had that one return down the sideline. Scott Case will go back to field his punt, and Adler will kick it. Almost snapped over his head. Beautiful kick. Case with a fair catch, and he's going to make it to the 46-yard line. 37-yard kick. And so Oklahoma, at the five-minute mark, will have the football once again. Tomorrow we're going to have a doubleheader of basketball, the USSR against Indiana. And then the Washington Bullets will take on the Philadelphia 76ers, beginning tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern on CBS. Danny Bradley now has come in at quarterback for Oklahoma. He's a sophomore from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. He started last week due to the suspension to Kelly Phelps. Bradley gives to Ledbetter, and Ledbetter's going nowhere. Good reaction that time by Curry. Missouri will finish the season next week. That traditional rivalry they have with Kansas, that game will be played in Columbia. And as you look at that game, Missouri would like to win that one and end up above the 500 mark for the year. They came in here 4, 3, and 2. They would be 4, 4, and 2 after today. But after going to a bowl game four years in a row, that has come to an end. Second down, virtually 10. Dupree again. Dupree had 138 yards prior to that carry. Advancing the ball to the 37. Taft sails. Bobby Bell can bite on the stop. You know, Oklahoma doesn't have a lot of depth in running backs because of the red shirts. There's only been two freshmen who didn't red shirt. That is Dupree and then the kicker, Culver. So they have to use Dupree. They have to keep using he along with Sims, Wilson, Ledbetter. Dupree now at 145 yards. Wilson with 82. Missouri total for the day is 80. Wilson. He makes it to the 35, and that should be enough for the first down. On a third and two, looks like we may have a penalty flag. And there is one at the 40-yard line. Oklahoma today winning this game, throwing their first touchdown pass. Tackling by face mask. Wait a minute. <laughs> they pointed at Oklahoma tackling by face mask. <laughs> That's a little different. I started to say by winning this game, they set themselves up for the Big 8 championship battle. They throw their first touchdown pass. Fontenet catches his first career pass. Culver comes in, gets a chance to kick a little bit today. What other highlights can you point out here for Oklahoma? Well, I think probably just the fact that uh, they have matured week after week, steadily developed. Defense has played much better. And I think the improvement on the offense, going, making the change in the, after they were shut out by USC and only rushed for 43 yards as they get a first and 10 really has made the difference. And that's a gutsy call of changing offenses. And they did it in 1970. The coaches were afraid that they were all going to get fired. And they wanted to at least give a good shot or good effort. And I don't know. There was a lot of criticism towards Barry Switzer this year even. A lot of articles written that maybe a coach ought to go do something else somewhere else. And, and uh, he made the changes. And the coaches and the players kind of rallied around after the Texas defeat or victory and uh, have played so well and, uh, at this point in the season. Oklahoma in this game show you how they lean towards the rush. They've run the ball 61 times. They passed four times. First down, 15 yards to go after the penalty. Dupree, and Dupree gets three, maybe four yards of that back. Fans here want their star to be treated lightly, taken care of here. 
One thing that's nice about that uh, game between Nebraska and Oklahoma is they both can rest up, get some of the nicks and bumps and bruises healed. They're ready for the showdown. SMU on their way to the Cotton Bowl. Of course, they got a big game next week against Arkansas. Nebraska still leading 14-7 against the Cyclones. Still with 24-0 over Army. Clemson. Oh, that's a big, big game, isn't it? In College Park, Maryland. Second and 13. Bradley. He hits Carter. David Carter. That's his 10th catch of the year. Sophomore out of Altus, Oklahoma. And that is a 14-yard pickup. Bradley threw that ball very well. Coaches are very high on Danny Bradley's ability to throw the football. It's probably one problem that he has difficulty with is he's 5'10", not real big, but he throws a very pretty ball, not a real strong arm, but has a great delivery, not such an overly quick release, but he's good fundamental passer. They'd like to have redshirted him at the start of the year, but they ended up playing him quite a bit. Stanley Wilson on the carry this time. Bradley, that was coming into the game, he'd hit 8 of 16 for 130 yards. And so that 14-yard pass completion, helping those statistics, but this time... No gain on the play. Second down coming up. 2.08 left. Brad Opal is now coming into the secondary for Missouri, a freshman from Edwardsville, Illinois. Bradley pitches to the three. Look out, 20, 15, and he's to the 10. They can hardly get him down. Combination of speed and power. He now has 159 yards. Last week, he had 158. So that's his high for the year. Watch Marcus Dupree. They both give the counter jab fake. Bradley's going to pitch the ball. Good pitch. Gets a great block outside, out in front by Chet Winters, number 40. And watch the power. That's Kevin Parter, and he's going to try to bulldog Marcus. You know, the fans boo Missouri because they're gang tackling. That's the only way you stop Marcus Dupree. you got to gang tackle him. It's some combination to have that kind of speed and still weigh, I guess he weighs about 233. They list him at 225, but I think Barry told us he weighs closer to 233. Yeah, he is a big physical specimen, and as you said earlier, Gary, he's not a real good practice player. He came out of a good high school program and out of Philadelphia, Mississippi. It's not a large city, but uh, you know he was such a star and such a dominating player that he didn't have to practice it hard. You get a university level, the first thing you've got to learn is how to be a exceptional practice player and work hard and at the college level. Oklahoma. Dead ball. Takes mass penalty. Still second down. Now that was what the fans were upset about. Got to pre out of bounds over there with the face mask. Started to say Oklahoma in this game averaging seven and a half yards of carry. Missouri, on the other hand, just a little under two yards to carry, but for this Oklahoma team, you figure Dupree being a freshman, and they've got Sims, a sophomore, got Tillman, who they have redshirted, another freshman. I think they have some backs capable of playing that eye formation. Wilson, the senior, led better also a senior. Here's Dupree, a little trouble getting the pitch. Look at that, touchdown! play tell it didn't look like there's any running room there did it no great leg drive and power and just determination 166 yards for debris as Culver line drives one through no good missed this one so the count will stay 41-14 with 145 to go. 486 yards rushing for Oklahoma, 166 by this man. So Debris, last two touchdowns to put a capper on this one. Okay, let's uh, look ahead a little bit. 
Fred and Ara will be giving you the scores and highlights on the scoreboard show. Then the WBA lightweight crown as Boom Boom Mancini goes against Dooku Kim, who's the WBA's number one ranked challenger. He's an aggressive fighter, very similar to the champion. Should be a great fight. And then we'll take that look at Landon Taylor, along, or Landon Turner, I should say, along with Bobby Knight. That's a very emotional story, and I'm just glad that CBS had the opportunity to follow that and see another side of Bobby Knight. They're starting to chant here, we want Nebraska. They'll get them. They will. <laughs> fourth quarter continues to be a quarter that Missouri just soon forget about. They've allowed 66 points while scoring only 12 thus far this year. That's going to be a five-yard penalty. I want to take time to recognize our crew for the job they've done. Our executive producer is Kevin O'Malley. Our producer is Jim Silman. Our director, Larry Cavallina. Joe Carroll A., our associate producer, Joe Tier, our broadcast associates, John Connell and Susan Sponberg, Bill McKechnie and Tony Hines for a job very well done, men and women. And Steve Davis, I'm looking forward to that game November 26th. You know, Nebraska was really taken to the wire of Missouri, and of course there's a little psychological play here. I, I wonder, I probably Warren Powers will, will make some comment tomorrow in the papers about that Felt like Barry Switzer might run up the football score, but I think a lot of that is because of the psychology and coaching. And Nebraska comes out of the Iowa State game, say they beat Iowa State today, and the psychological edge that Oklahoma might get by having a 41-14 or whatever the score might be has to kind of chew on Nebraska a little bit. Nebraska really struggled with Missouri. Tough game. Yeah, I'd say Missouri played exceptional game against them, and really a couple of plays, and they would have beaten Nebraska. I'll tell you, our statistician Mike Swanson's been busy today. A lot of figures to talk about. We thank you, Mike, for your assistance again today. And our spotter, Steve Bear. Short kick. Hal Vern comes up with it, brings it out to the 41-yard line. And it's about over here with 138 left in the game. Oklahoma. Now will move to 8-2 and two on the year. 6-0 and all in the Big 8. The 15th ranked Sooners, I think, will probably move up in the polls after this week is over. They have a seven-game winning streak after losing two of their first three. They haven't lost since switching to the I formation. They've already, of course, surpassed their victory output of last year when they won seven games. And they're rolling out. Throwback intended for Davis. Tony Davis, sophomore out of Colorado Springs. Second down, that stops the clock with 132. In the game, Adler's 11 of 18, 146 yards, one interception. Barry Switzer's probably looking for somebody to play. Again, though, this new scholarship limitation of 35 a year, 90 total, doesn't give you a lot of depth. There's not a lot of guys you can look to in yeah, this situation. We'll talk about that after this play. And the 41, Adler. bring it out to the 47-yard line. It'll bring up third down. Well, all the injuries that Missouri has had this year, the, the 30-95 rule, I think, really has influenced the, or, and caused some of the frustrations for Missouri because, and also the complication of the freshman redshirt rule because now you've got limited amount of scholarships and then you're trying to redshirt freshmen to keep, uh, to add some to, to some depth. So it kind of is a paradoxical situation and Missouri struggled with it because of all the injuries they've had to players on their football team. In fact, they played a JV game this week, and Missouri didn't have any running backs to play it. They had to bring them all up to the varsity. Pass complete to Eric Troy. What a career he had at Paris, Missouri. He had 16 100-yard games, 10 200-yard games. First player in the history of that town to receive a major college scholarship. Fourth down, and Missouri will just continue to try to pick it up here with 30 seconds left in the game. Barry Switzer, his 98th win. Hey, he's got an orange in his hand. Is that symbolic of anything? Uh, well, they're playing catch with it. <laughs> Adler to drain. And he didn't get the first down, I don't believe. That's going to bring up 
Oklahoma taking over the football. He's short. So at the 50-yard line, Oklahoma has it with 14 seconds. So Switzer's here would win against Nebraska. The one in the bowl. Look at this. Final. Clemson has defeated Maryland. And that ends a seven-game winning streak for the Terrapins. Clemson really has come on strong after losing on Monday night to Georgia and then tying Boston College. But if he wins on November 26th in the bowl game, he would become the first coach to hit the century mark as quickly as he have and has in his 10th year. Bud Wilkinson did it in 11 years, but 10 years would be what it would take for Switzer to reach the century mark. Have you been thinking about your MVP, Mr. Davis? I have, have you? I think I have. <laughs> the, the envelope, please. All right. Shall we announce it now? The Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from Oklahoma is Marcus Dupree, and the Chevrolet MVP for Missouri is Marlon Adler. So a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist students in all chosen fields of academic endeavor. There they are. Adler, 12 of 19, 149 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Dupree, 19 carries, 166 yards, two touchdowns, one of them a 70-yard burst. And he set an all-time freshman rushing record here at Oklahoma today. And so falling on the ball is Bradley and Oklahoma. Now ready for that collision with Nebraska, which will be carried here on CBS the day after Thanksgiving. Missouri going down to defeat. Now at four, four and two, they'll conclude next week against the University of Kansas. Well, it's got to be about as good a position as Oklahoma can possibly be in as they get ready for that game. Well, one thing that Barry Switzer can sell to the football team is momentum is on their side. They have improved week after week. They've taken on tough challenges over the past few weeks, but they've gotten better on defense and offense, all facets of the game, and they've got to be in great shape physically to go to Lincoln. There, as we know, no one injured that uh, will be a problem. As we said, they have the week to get ready. Murphy was out of there for a while. But uh, it's just amazing to me how each year it always comes down to that game, and it's no different this time around. We'll be back with some final thoughts on this game from Norman, Oklahoma. Well, Oklahoma with a convincing 41-14 win.